uh, in person. Oh, you're recording now? All right, we'll start over. Uh, so introduce yourself for the record so everybody knows whether you're here and in person or on the call. Seth Barnes in person. Hey, bug me uh, in person. Casey Kula in person. Josh. <laughs> Josh Seeds in person. Wendy Gerlach in person. Nick Hanneman in person. Big Wise in person. Terry Three in person. David Showalter in person. Will Tucker in person. Adam Coble in person. Amanda Sullivan Astor in person. Julie Furman in person. Stacey Detweiler in person. All right. And who do we have on the phone with us? Jason Robinson virtual. Nick Jim Kraus virtual. Nick Tuffelauer virtual. All right. I think that might be it. Okay. Well, we have a quorum, sufficient number of people. So thanks for joining us today. Um, and uh, without any further ado, I think we got lunch waiting for us. Wait, a couple, so cut, let's do a couple of things. What, what do you, okay. I'd like to just to update. An update. We can get that taken care of. And next slide. Uh, oh, right, housekeeping. And this is the usual stuff, but two, two quick things. We are gonna start doing executive summaries that will be like sort of think one page captures the big picture of what was discussed in here. Um, and then since we're in a new place, the restrooms are out kind of where you came in, but instead of going to the right to go out, you keep going straight and it's to the left. And there's a little hallway to the left that says restrooms there. So just for folks in the room to know about. Um, and then exits, there's one you came in and there's actually two much even closer to the left and to the right. So just so that people know about that before we, we go to lunch. And then let's do next slide. Let's, uh, updates. Nick, do you want to, are there any division updates to share? So how do you folks want to go? <laughs> we can explain uh, brush strokes. Most of the hiring first because we need a lot of people to get all the stuff home. A little over a year now with private force to court legislation, and most of those uh, positions have been hired and have been doing a lot of good work. The uh, steep slope work to do May 1st is, is on track. Communications out to folks. There's also uh, a lot of curiosity about training and need for training, and we finished what we call Module A, which we have about almost uh, 200 folks within the department on um, module A, which is basically what are the changes, what are, what are some of the basics of the Forest Practices Act, how to get alignment for even administration across the state, and then introducing the changes that are coming in July as well as January. So that was back in back at the end of February, early March, and now we're slated to do module B training, which is going to cover some in the field work, some of the stream uh, regulations that are coming, coming down, as well as how do we get even administration with everybody entering the same kind of data in the same system so we can report out to the legislature. And that'll be just playing some of that problem and looking at how we communicate uh, clearly with uh, starting out with comments, formal comments on a notification, if there's a written statement on satisfactory condition or um, some other other means of communication to help the regulated uh, entities fly with the forest price tags and actually protecting the natural resources there. And then uh, the enforcement actions for penalties were needed uh, with the biggest emphasis on education, 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 because both on the regulated community side and on the conservation side, if folks know what the expectations are, know what the rules are, all help with the success that everybody's looking for out of that. Uh, it has all been building up over the past, I don't know, can we still say a few years? Is it been longer than that? Some part of the the decades, but hopefully we see the success there with the with the training uh, that we're building out and working with various organizations to start moving more of that to the external audiences. Uh, there will be a steep slopes training in 
mid June uh, for that steep slope certification. And we'll have more information. Feel free to resources to associated with walkers, or it's called Lumens Association, Associates Council, and other entities. And I've, I've, I'm sure I've missed somebody there. Partnership for Forestry Education, that'll capture a whole bunch more people, but uh, helping partners, we're all getting the same message out on, on these different uh, topics. So uh, that said, there's also the documents that are gonna help the guidance on this training and also a resource for Folks, after the training is done, that's the Forest Practices Technical Guides. We have two of those documents done, so that are pretty close to done so far. That's the steep slopes and the equipment rotation zone, the Forest Practices Technical Guides. And um, expect to have roads and forest road accessibility for free uh, by mid May. And then the other force practices technical guidance will roll out over time. And there's also some cool cleanup that's going to happen with forestry to consider that in seven. And then having that, having those rules ready as soon as possible in what will be the final versions for July 1, 2023, and January 1, 2024. So folks can uh, have those planning, have those enhanced planning. Those are things that come up, you know, kind of top of mind. Obviously, there's still work being done on the HCP. We haven't quite completed yet. Working on it. <laughs> uh, and we'll get there uh, as soon as we can. Yeah, that one, good, good minds working on that. A lot of good work going on across the division, across the agency. Good on this. So, so did you say, um, and I apologize if I missed it. Has there been a hire made for that uh, no. adaptive management? And we have, we have narrowed down and still in process for the adaptive management policy. Okay. All right. So getting, getting close to that. We can talk about the process. Yep. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. No, it yes. Thank you. Uh, here, okay. Any other questions or any other topics you were hoping I would discuss? Or Thanks for the updates. Let me just throw in a couple more. We've got a contract with INR that's sort of a contract agreement to get us through the end of this biennium to help them uh, be up and running once the new biennium gets arrives and we've got the funding and everything so that they're as much as possible ready to hit the ground running. So it's a it's really sort of a scoping process for a longer term contract agreement with them. And then next meeting, we'll bring in some folks to talk about public meetings and public records, that type of thing. So at the May AMC meeting, we'll have somebody more knowledgeable than myself who can speak about that. Good. That's fantastic. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Let's see. There you go. So it was chair. Uh, it also has public comment on. Do we want oh, right. to go through? Good point. It just wasn't on that. That's good thing. Yeah. yeah, it's probably the next slide. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so pause, pause there. Uh, any 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 public comment from any members of the public that are joining? Going once. Going twice. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Let's uh, let's grab lunch. And do, what time do you want to be uh, circling back, Gary? Uh, looking at the clock, it's twelve fifteen. Yeah. Maybe. Sorry, yeah, the agenda has twelve thirty on it. So let's yeah, let's stick with that. Twelve thirty. So fifteen minutes, which means we need to be efficient. So go for it.
folks are still uh, uh, chewing, but while you're while you're uh, chewing, um, we're going to go ahead and, and start uh, the conversation around uh, finalizing the IRS team at nominees. Thanks for everyone for participating and sending in your thoughts to Terry and Terry for putting those together. We're going to now do a, a Terry's going to give a presentation briefly to present those the, the, the final sort of wrap up. That said, these were meant as a discussion starter uh, and not as the like the de facto way that we're choosing here. Right. And so uh, with that, I'll kick it over to Terry. Right. Sure. So let's go to the one slide that's okay. So, yeah. So first of all, just to introduce this concept. We're going to be working with, I'm calling it a temperature read. Basically, this is a way as folks are having a discussion and, and an idea seems to gel, this is seeming like this is a good idea before a motion is made. Um, the, the purpose of this is to get a sense of how much agreement there is in the room. And so this is just an informal way of people saying, by putting out their hand with number of fingers from zero to five, zero meaning I'm strongly opposed to this, five I enthusiastically support this, this you know, draft idea, four I support it, three I can live with it, two I probably won't support it, one I oppose. So just so folks have an understanding about sort of that model of, of so the co-chairs can get a read on how people are feeling about what's where the discussion is landing. Any questions or thoughts about that? Oh, wait, that's oh, the right. Oh. <laughs> uh, how, many, how many figures was that? <laughs> Not much people like lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We can do a test run. Yeah. How many, how many people like how many hands? <laughs> One hand. Very good. good. Um, okay. And Jacob is the one who does the organizing there. Thank you, Jacob. You've been doing a great job with that. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jacob. Food's been good. Thank you. Um online, just Jason. Tim, any thoughts or questions about that? Just double check. Nope, this looks great. I'm a one close to lunch since I didn't get any today, so. See that? How can we get you to a two? <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next slide. Um, and then the next one. So today, obviously, you're going to be deciding on the, the suite of nominees for the board served on the IRST. And this slide just is basically a reminder. You, you, there's a decision framework. You've talked quite a bit about the characteristics, what you want to see in the members. There's a bunch of considerations that are emailed out. Just think questions to consider as you, you think about it. Um, Part of your decision today will be how many to send, how many names, and obviously which particular people, and then who for each of the these statutory or defined slots of public institution, timber and conservation. Um, and then is there anything else you want to express to the board um, as you go forward? So that's that's the decision framework in a in a from a 5,000 foot view and Folks have all the documents and everything in front of you, so I won't dive into that because we've talked about all those details at, the, at previous meetings. Um, any questions before getting into actual results of the straw poll? Yeah. Next slide. So this is the results of the straw poll. Um, each little box represents uh, in the in the stack up for each name represents one person voted for that person, and then it's color coded by public institution as gray, timber as green, and conservation as blue. Um, and somebody got created with those colors, so that was kind of cool. Um, and there's a 
one or two of the FC members voted. And they voted for more than one person in some of these slots. So there's a few extra votes overall, but I don't think it, it changes the overall extra. Um, and as Seth is saying, this is not final decision. This is a to help organize your thoughts and see where people are landing for overall who they want on the RST. And again, the statutory requirement is at least five and it has to be an odd number and it has to be one each of these three uh, groups shown by the, the three colors. And so as you can see, I'll just, you know, name the folks. Homiac got the most. Is it the right pronunciation? Yeah. I think it's got the most, got the most votes. Um, Burnett, second most, but Croft. And he and Light were tied. And then Bishop and Mike Buffalo were tied. Uh, next to four. And then can you, um, can you X out that new app so, oh, yeah. for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Do that. Yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. And then Tom DeLuca and Christine May got three. Yvonne or Smendy got two. And Carol Priest didn't get any. So that's the results of the straw poll in summary. Are there any questions about what's on the screen? This, this is just results of the straw poll before folks get into discussion. I'm going to hand it back to Seth for that part of the discussion. Any questions or about this at this stage of the game? See the sense is that there's kind of some consensus I can see about who the three named reps, right? Homiak, Burnett, and Link Blitkoff would seem to be the strongest contenders and they match the three uh, Designated statutory roles. An obvious statement, but no, that's, <laughs> that's not something we can draw from this. Yeah. 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 And that was the intention too from our last meeting. Like this is to be able to see visually if there was consensus around mm -hmm. dealers and particular folks. So hopefully using this as a starting point will set us up for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I guess partly I'm saying. There seems to be some strong, good feeling about those three. I don't see, it would seem to me not to spend tons of time reconsidering that. We might say, we could, Well, like, so this is, this is, I'm going to hand this to, to Seth as the co-chair to, to help lead that part of the discussion. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. And oh. it's, it's sort of more, yeah, it's now, it's now up to you folks to converse about what you see, what you want, and how you want. See, I'm happy to jump in, answer questions as needed. Um, and so, I guess the first question would be helpful to leave this on the screen for folks. And also, this is a question for the folks remotely. Would it be easier to see folks uh, in the room without a slide? Or actually, you can control that on your end, I think. Um, but yeah, let's. <laughs> Let's uh, let's discuss. So at the end of this, of course, we need to. So we've got time here on the in the on the agenda to continue the discussion of uh, to see if we can land to a place of of general consensus from the group, and then um, and then uh, motion and more discussion and and go from there. But this, of course, would um, and we haven't finished our charter, but. Uh, but this, I am certain that all of us would consider this a substantial decision, um, or we will want a formal vote. Um, and so we'll, we'll be doing that here to make sure we record that correctly. Um, but uh, in general, I don't disagree, uh, Wendy, that, that we clearly have three that people feel strongly about, and they fit those three uh, categories. And so now the question is, how do you fill that out with five, uh, with at least five? Um, and uh, you have the next two, Danny Ian Light, but then Bishop and Buffo also received uh, quite a few votes. Um, so um, 
I'll just open it up for discussion. If anybody has anything they want to bring up. I'll just reinforce what Wendy said. I think maybe just expedite things. People don't have a problem with the first three. And you kind of agree on those. And then you know, maybe. I'll make just a quick comment. So I do know that, you know, I, I think. Jessica's great. I will note that, you know, two of the three timber industry representatives voted for Jeff Light as the timber industry representative. So mm -hmm. I will just make make that a note. I think there's consensus that Jessica Homiak would be great, um, but I do think that it would be appropriate for the folks representing the timber industry to ultimately um, weigh in and kind of talk through. Um, why we chose Jeff Light as as the one to represent our interests. So just want to put that on the record. So, and I can explain if that is of interest <laughs> to folks, or if you felt like we got enough of that at the last meeting. Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah, so I, I'll just mention, <laughs> I chose Jeff just because Jeff was the industry sort of designated scientist within the uh, negotiations. And so he's um, really well suited, I think, to be on the IRST. He understands what the negotiations were about and what the intent is, what the intent of the role of the IRST is and, and what the, the job and the, the role of responsibility is there. So, um, and, and AOL worked directly with him as we kind of contemplated um, the, the rules and you know technical guidance and things like that and the perspective of the operator and he really understands on that piece. And again, Jessica does too. I'm not trying to mm -hmm. um, downplay her, her abilities either yeah. on the IRST. And we think I, I voted for her as well. I was just one of the white squares mm -hmm. <laughs> voting for her. So um, so anyways, just wanted to put that on the record for folks to understand. And, and we did get, you know, the I think it's one of the uh, appendices or one of the extra slides at the end was how each of us voted for each one. But, mm -hmm. but again, just wanted to just put that on the record. You know. That's helpful because so, I didn't memorize it. So thank yeah, you. yeah. As a as a vote of confidence, in addition to the three for Jeff. Yes. So I would, I'll just second that and say that from our perspective, having Kelly Burnett on there, which is a great choice, and I think Kelly's deserving. Obviously, people agree with that. Um, Jeff would be a good uh, complement to that, mm -hmm. being that they were the two scientists who were at the table. So to speak, um, during the negotiation. So, I think both of them together can add helpful perspective to the IRSD and to the to the MC as we move through things. That said, I will acknowledge that um, if Jeff makes that uh, uh, makes the five or the slate, that having both Jeff and Jessica there is sort of two uh, industry folks, and it would make sense from that perspective to make sure there's some balance. Uh, and so you've got Kelly Burnett there, and I know, um, Casey, you brought up, um, uh, and I forget, Ellen, is that her first name? Uh, Bishop. Um, um, and uh, perhaps she finds a way there as well to make sure that we've got that balance. Like the Burnett Bishops. Do any of them have the, the one reason why I voted for uh, Tom DeLuca was I figured that you know every team needs a leader and maybe I'm missing something on some of the other. I mean, everybody was great, right? But I mean, is there any of the ones we're talking about? Do they have some folks that you really need to help block in order to work? You know, I mean, you can enlighten me so that I can. Because it's one thing to have, you know, a bunch of great people, but things, you know, have a hard time coalescing around a, a goal, right? They need I don't know all of them personally, but I know that Kelly Burnett, Becky Flitcroft, and Jeff Light would all be able to fill that role okay, and would work collaboratively together to good. serve that role. Yeah, makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, I and R will be supporting them. So they will have solid support. And I know INR is considering having hiring a facilitator at the beginning to help out. So there's quite a bit of support for the, their success in addition to 
the folks that are leading that have the leadership skills. And Jessica manages the team. Okay. So, so I think for the, I think all of them probably ended up on this list because <laughs> you probably have some of that. Yeah. But it's good to know from people's understanding of them as well. Any other discussion? I kind of feel like in terms of um, managing it, the group, it's, I, I kind of feel like maybe a smaller number is better for that reason, to have the IRST be a smaller group that is they're less hard to manage in a way, and then have it then allocating the research out to the specific scientists. That's a little bit how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, I, I think we talked about that in mm -hmm. the previous meeting. I think there's general agreement there. Uh, it's smaller is probably better than, uh, than too big. <laughs> but the other, on the other side, though, do, do, is everybody comfortable if we settled on five that they all have a reasonable experience base in terms of you know knowledge for what the topics are going to be considered? That and that's people are comfortable with that. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm not sure what smaller means. So, um, are you saying five? I'm in five. Okay. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, that'd be minimum five, but I'm thinking more five serves to make the administration of the IRST and the sort of management skills and need to manage it would be less if it's an 80 proposal. So, I'm not making a proposal. I don't know that we're ready to make that, but would that mean if we have already a couple of people have articulated that they think that Bishop and Light should be members. Um, would that mean that Danahy would not if we're going to keep a odd number? Yes. So I would well, be pushing still towards that seven number. Uh, and I was going to go and suggest that we go out to Buffo. Um, in fact, I didn't vote for DeLuca because I had actually thought DeLuca, we already get so many other votes. That I, um, that anyway, so it's just to, to see my my mental play of not voting for <laughs> <Luca. laughs> it. me in the back, but regardless, um, re regardless, I was when you talk about a small number, I'm not sure if, if there's enough difference between five and seven. I still think seven is still a pretty good size in terms of being able to act if the members can get past, you know, the the science side of it, make it just to go to a decision side or can get into the point where they can work together across the boundaries. And I think from the couple of folks I do in fact know, um, I would think that they, they could. And so I would, I would still be looking towards a, a number like seven, if that would be not upsetting. I, I'm, I think seven's a good number as well. Um, just a, a consideration. So AMC, you have something in rule whereby if somebody can't make a meeting, you can send a proxy um, and sit in, in your plates and have all the same voting power. It's not the case on IRST. And the part of that the reason for that is because the IRST is much more technical and in depth. And so for somebody to come in and they're just way more in the weeds and involved in the development of the weeds and which weeds to pick and which ones are not. Going to pick. And so there's a something to consider is if you if somebody can't make a meeting or is has to resign unexpectedly, there isn't isn't an, a quick replacement for somebody to step in like there is with EMC. So just to <laughs> that difference between the two groups. I had a little bit of a feeling though that the IRST is a somewhat more opportunistic meeting schedules that's more linked to their work. Is that correct? Yeah just in the sense of more linked to their specific workload and projects. So they might have more control over their schedules as well, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I think long-term that might be the case. Yeah. Up in the beginning part, I think there's a, a, there's a, there's a fair amount of um, process that they, and, and, and things that they need to set out, similar to the AMPS. Yeah. Jason has a comment, I believe. Yeah. Jason and then Casey. Great. Thanks, guys. I just wanted to echo, I, you know, when I looked at this and kind of looking at the diversity of, of the membership and the um, size of the 
you know, the, the IRST, that seven came out as kind of, it's going to balance diversity of the membership. It's going to provide, based on the way that we kind of put a straw poll together, it provides that support for each of those three essential functions, public timber conservation. So I'm very supportive of looking at this from a seven number. I also was the one that voted for Bishop for the conservation because, you know, Casey did a fantastic job of really explaining about her passion for coming in and really being dedicated. So that was my vote there. So I think looking at it from seven, I think we've got the diversity spread across. Um, it is a little bit larger than five, but I agree it's not that much larger um, and kind of covers the full gamut of, of what we're talking about. Casey? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jason. Um, it seems uh, I, I'm I would be I think more supportive of five as opposed to seven. And um, my reasoning is that um, this core group um, is going to be doing a lot of process based work um, and they have the opportunity to identify the gaps in their own knowledge and experience and then appoint members to that on their own. They could decide that they want 13 be weird, but they could decide they want 11 and add those members as they see the need for the, that particular membership. Um, but as I'm looking at this, it's, uh, I, I'd prefer five to have a smaller group going forward uh, to get started. But then when I look at this list, I have a hard time identifying seven in a way that makes me feel like there is a, a what I think is important, which is the balance between conservation and industry experience people with seven. Um, but the other, I guess, the, oh, if, I, if I may chair, to go ahead and then Stacy. Yeah, and the, the other uh, part of that too is um, it seems like uh, when this group moves forward, um, I just think they're going to need to have their own decision-making process and um, pull in the numbers that they want. And so I want to make sure that that, that uh, future membership reflects um, a, a balanced approach as well. Sorry, go ahead, Stacey. Yeah, I just would echo um, comments, Casey. I think that there's some value to a smaller group at the outset as they're developing their process, as they're able to kind of, based on the research agenda that we set up for them, then kind of figure out like who if there are additional folks, you know, we've talked a lot about trying to get a tribal scientist on as well, who can really add value. And I feel like that group is really, once they kind of get rolling, are going to know if, if additional folks make sense. Um, and similar to Casey too, I think about sort of the balance and the independence of this group and looking at the list of folks that we have, seven seems a little harder to get to that, whereas five, I feel like we, we might be able to accomplish that in a way that feels balanced and then allows for additions that are, are more independent. Um, so I would be leaning towards five as well. What is that, Josh? Yeah, um, <clears throat> part of the reason that, uh, that I favor seven is you know, what, what we're seeing here and, and what we're talking about is having a couple industry people, a couple conservation group people, and then one person who's just sort of a public institution. And I think that's too light on, on people who are, um, you know, not a party to, uh, who weren't a part of the, the private forest accord um, negotiations. And I think um, for, for durability and for diversity of viewpoints, it's going to be really important to have people, um, a, a number of people outside who are outside of the process and who are um, coming in with a point of view that's, that's less invested in that process and, and a little more invested in where are we going from here and, and just sort of broadening things. Um, you know, I, I think both the, the industry actors and the conservation actors have done a really great job. Um, I'm really actually staggered that we are at this point. I didn't, you know, I've been at, at DEQ for almost 16 years now, and I, I didn't really uh, <clears throat> see this coming um, and, and how quickly it developed is really astounding. I'm, I'm like really I, I don't know if I have the right to be proud of everyone, but I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally proud of everyone. Let's your feelings. <laughs> But that's reasonable. Um, but I like the idea of sort of expanding out, um, you know, who's, 
who's who's got a, a piece of this. And so I think seven gets us there. I mean, when I sit around and, and, and think about this when I'm supposed to be going to sleep at night, uh, <laughs> you know, I really liked, uh, you know, two, two timber, two conservation, and three other. Um, and so like, if I was, if based on kind of the voting and, and what people have said, if I was going to set this up, I would, I would say, uh, you know, like neck and light for timber and Burnett and Bishop for conservation and then Flickcroft Danny he and probably DeLuca for other, given that that Mr. Buffo is, um, you know, with Mason Bruce and Ger Gerard. So he's kind of industry and kind of independent contractor. I'm not quite sure how to fit him in there. I I I, I think Mr. Buffo would have a really great viewpoint as, as a practitioner, but I, I'm concerned about the balance. So anyway, um, you know, I, I like seven because then we've got three people who are industry for conservation. You know, I was a little disappointed that Dr. Aris Mendig didn't rate higher, um, um, but um, given his experience with the science and, and as well as being having his science go into rulemaking processes, but I don't know, that's just that's just my thought. I'd, I'd like to to see a little more expansive, a little more inclusive as we're starting this out, and then I think that still leaves some room if, if the IRST feels like it needs. Uh, some some more expertise in there or if someone leaves that can be replaced. So I've got a question, Terry. Mm -hmm. uh, what because we know that this is this is our shot as far as the AMC of weighing in substantively on the makeup of the IRST. From here on, uh, per the rule, it's not our place anymore. Sure. But the board uh, will have full authority to replace even at potentially as Stacy has mentioned you know a, a member would have to be two if we were at, at any rate it would have to be two because you have to keep it an odd number yeah um do you do we know what that I mean is it it's not lined out what the process is for that right I mean the board can just have a discussion. I guess we could weigh in and like encourage the board at some point if we felt like there was a need for, or the or the IRST could do that themselves. So the IRST, um, the IRST is the one that will put forth for vacancies or or uh, who they want for people they think should be on there. Um, so it's it's really up to the IRST. You know, statute says going forward, uh, if there's a vacancy on, on the team. Or if the team determines that a new scientific or technical discipline must be represented on the team or for team performance research duties, A, the team shall submit a list of candidates to the board. B, the board may appoint one or more of the candidates as voting members of the team. If the board does not select one, then the team shall submit a new list of candidates until the board appoints one of them. So that's straight out of statute. Okay, so it becomes their their entity to manage the, the IRST themselves, but a process is there for them to expand if they wanted to. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I understand. Yeah, like, no, it's one great question goal there. And honestly, it's been a while since I've read it. You don't that. remember all that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, tag I, that. Go I ahead. know we we did we've done that at a previous yeah. meeting, so I don't know if I want to keep There's doing that. Aren't up. I know, I know. I know. You know, other two other yeah. columns here. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so uh, similar to the question that Seth just raised, um, you know, I I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to kind of the the folks that Josh had lined out, but if we did, you know. If we did go down to the five, if the group felt like that was a more balanced, we could all really, you know, find consensus around five. And if we can't get to seven, then could we provide the other candidates like as a, a list of to the IRST to say, hey, these are other people that were considered and like, can we give them more information if they then themselves say, no, we actually feel like we need to be at seven or, hey, we actually feel like we need to be at nine. And they've got sort of a the list that we considered. I mean, would, could that, would that happen or could that happen? I mean, there's problem? nothing in statute preventing that. You're just saying, yeah. here's some, I mean, it's, first of all, it'll be public it's, record anyway. Yeah. Second, public. Yeah. Second of all, it's, it's, you can say, hey, folks, it'd be great if you would 
You know, here's here's the people that are interested. Here are yeah. thoughts. Here's even what thoughts the ANSI was on, you know, yeah. this straw poll, for example. Yeah. Um, and and because because they could add people relatively quickly, like maybe if it was just five, and they got going on their charter and everything else. Then and they start, you know, get our first research question, and then they say, "Oh, you know, actually, we might might need a few more. We might want to actually grow a little bit more." They could having that list of other people that we've said, "Hey, these, all these people said that they could do it," you know, and if that fit with with what they felt like they needed, it seems like that could be really easy for them to say, you know, let's broaden a little bit. So I guess, like I said, I'm not necessarily opposed to the folks that that Josh had lined out. I just feel like having a smaller number with that additional list could provide a valuable process where they're getting going early with a smaller number and then could expand relatively quickly if, if necessary. So. Yeah. Adam, I know you don't have a vote here, but you're a member. So yeah. I'm going to ask you what your thoughts are on the slate. Are on the on, on everything of the number about. or the number the folks just well I I think and I I mentioned this the last meeting I think starting we've got our three and that's sort of a easy one to check off um, just in terms of process and before we start really drilling down into the the remaining ones so um, just kind of my my thought process there is knock that one down and then focus more on the other ones. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it's been brought up a couple of times. So we could definitely do that. I don't, I'm not hearing any opposition to those three um, from the group and given the number of votes. Uh, I think it's fairly safe to assume that that's, I mean, I don't know, we could take a formal motion on those three and then move on from there, or we could just continue to discuss it, the fingers thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we could just do the fingers thing. Yeah. We could try out the fingers. <laughs> How, how does everybody feel? Test out the five finger method here. Uh, how does everybody feel about those first three? Hold up your clarify and their designations or, or just their just the first three themselves. So let's not complicate it with the designations. Just voting numbers, or do you want everybody? Um, sure, everybody can just weigh in. Uh, give your if we're taking temperature. Why not? Yeah, take your temperature. <laughs> I was seeing a lot of consensus around yeah. that. Um, Jay, well, that sounds good. That was a good, a good call, Adam. Kim, uh, you also sort of in the same seat. Any thoughts here? It seems you mean about the first three. Yeah, I, or or the the whole discussion five versus seven and um, so all of that. I mean. I can't necessarily vote, but it seems to me that the verse three fit the criteria that the group came up with for the IRST. And I, since you gave me the floor, I'll take it. Um, you know, I, a lot of the characteristics that are that have been identified as ideal for the IRST members are subjective, um, collaborative and a good team player, uh, frank truth teller. A lot of these characteristics, I think, are absolutely essential based on the descriptions that people provided for the potential IRST members. I have no idea whether they meet that, those criteria <laughs> or not. So, but what I do know is, or I think I know, I could be wrong. If you look at applied research background, not necessarily currently under pressure to publish, currently connected or connected to the research community, um, familiar with complex monitoring and research, I went through and took a look at all of the proposed nominees in ResearchGate. And ResearchGate is an online tool that identifies the scientific research publications that individuals have made, who their co-authors are, and what the subject matter is. And if I take a look across this, and if I'm giving you too much information, say so and I'll stop. No, go ahead. So if I look across the, the um, histogram that you have here with the names, Homiac has 70 publications, Burnett 61, Flitcroft 74, Danahy 50, Light has four, Bishop has one book, maybe three if you go to her 
personal website. Buffo, I think, is uh, has a is acknowledged as a technical writer and a DNR uh, EIS document. DeLuca has 180, but those are largely in soil chemistry and moss communities. May has 33 publications. Aris Mindai or Mindy, I'm not sure how to pronounce, has 139, and Friesen has zero. So there are those that you have identified here, I think, that meet certain criteria, and others are more questionable. If you quantify their publications, if that means anything with respect to applied research background connected to the research community and familiar with complex monitoring and research. And it, Again, there are other criteria that you all have identified that may have more sway. So there, but clearly in my mind, there are those that are, have more publications in a subject matter that from NEMS, who I represent, forest and fish, probably have more association with what I would be looking for than perhaps what other people are looking for. As I said before, the first three, Homiak, Burnett, and Flitcroft, seem to meet the criteria for publication, subject matter, and experience. That's not to say others don't, but that the question before me was, did the first three, they seem to meet those criteria? Are they the people that I would choose if I only had to choose three? I can't tell you that, but I, I can tell you that they meet the criteria. So I don't know right. if that's helpful or not, and I and I know I'm looking at it in a very linear, black and white sort of manner. Which, but that's just so that's just full disclosure. So thanks for that. Thanks for asking. Yeah, thank you. That was uh, appreciate that. That's that's useful. I'm thinking it, and I think as you noted, that that's uh, that is one important part of the experience that we want on this IRST. Um, of course, all those soft skills are also mm -hmm. very important. Um, so that was very useful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Other, any other thoughts around the table? Just wanted to build on what Amanda said. Um, it reminded me I had come across a recommendation from former IMST members, which is somewhat comparable to our IRST, to former Governor Brown. And um, some of those folks really strongly recommended an open solicitation for members. And so it, it makes me think to, again, to kind of echo your comment, Amanda, that it may be, may be closer to consensus around five. And then there's also an added benefit of, of that. Then they can establish their own process, maybe benefiting from lessons from the IMST. And trap practices. <laughs> Uh, where an open solicitation maybe addresses some of Josh's concerns, which I do share, right? That, you know, stepping away, the further we get out from the PFA process, you know, there should be more of that independence. That is truly the goal of the IRST. And potentially by keeping this group smaller now allows for more of that moving forward if they decided to do an open solicita solicitation that then would allow um, other candidates beyond the space that are interested and have um, ability to participate. So just something to consider. All right, uh, any more discussion? I just want to add one thing that um, uh, uh, in, in my limited experience in local government, I always appreciated when advisory committees um, also added words to their, um, their recommendations. And it seems like um, an encouragement that we have an open solicitation might be helpful when presenting our, our list of nominees to the board, um, just so they have that information. And, and maybe if we have other things that we want them to consider um, or that go to the IRST for consideration. Because I think that's important that we didn't really have time in this setting to last the world. So it was limited to the people I knew and the people you knew and the people you knew. All right, any other discussion before we take a break? Derek? Just, just gonna say there, there had been discussion of 
potentially recommending to the board something around the tribal representation. So that's that's sort of in the same vein of what you were just saying. You, when you move this forward, you could add something, hey, this is important as a value. There's the tribal part, there's the uh, open solicitation part, uh, some of these kinds of things that, you know, or even IRS2 we want. The, the intent is for you to be independent. So we got you going, rolling with five and however you want to say about that next part. I just have one other quick question on that. So like Casey just said, in this process, it was very like, who do I know? Who do you know? Who do they know? With mm -hmm. INR support for the IRS team moving forward, would they be able to do a more formal like solicitation process where people would apply themselves to something and like that could get broadcast more widely and more openly than maybe what this process was? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's good to know too. Sean, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Sean Gordon, I don't know if you're in here, but if you, did you hear that last question? I spoke for you. I don't want to you know, just shut up and let you speak. Yes, well, you know, we're, I think, pretty flexible on on what the group and what IRST will want. So we're here to support you folks. So if that's something, uh, you know, the groups decide they want to do, I see no reason we can't support it. Just to summarize and make sure I understand this. So if we settle on five, let's say, just hypothetically, that if the IRST, when they get into the thick of things, they decide that they do need a broader spectrum of technical knowledge base, that they can go out and seek that out on their own. Is that correct? Okay. And then and then recommend that to the Yeah. Good. I would say one one and not to throw a wet blanket on the idea. But there, the I think the list of folks that we have here is is a pretty actually decent list. Uh, I would just say that the the world is not huge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oregon forestry <laughs> research uh, and aquatics, um, and uh, there there are names that are not on this that could definitely and should you know be considered in future rounds. But I would just curb your uh, your. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your expectation there in terms of this wide world of, of a bunch of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of, of other well to like to to put a little fire on it, on it rather than just curving it you know I, I was thinking oh it'd be really nice to have somebody who's just really deeply steep in statistics who's available to um to, to the team um and you know i outside of oregon i know a lot of aquatics statisticians right um, and so maybe there's maybe there's that opportunity for the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certainly some. That's, that's and along the same lines, it's always a possibility that RST, there can either be additional members is one option that you all have been talking about, but they can also say, hey, for this particular thing, we need a little more expertise to weigh in on this. And it can be a an, an informal or it can be a... Yeah. You know, INR hiring or way, you know, so there's there's right. additional opportunities yeah. to get technical yeah. expertise in a given in, 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 in addition to just yeah. in addition yeah. to having an IRST advising coming to a couple of meetings and mm -hmm. helping them mm -hmm. grapple yeah. with certain things. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I envision, frankly, mm -hmm. as they get in the weeds on a given topic. Say it's eDNA, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they bring in mm -hmm. somebody that's published a bunch on eDNA to come in and talk about that or whatever it happens to be, right? I mean, there could be a number of different. Topics. All right, so why don't we uh, take a five minute bio break and uh, and uh, if, if folks have additional things they want to come, let me know if there's some additional things you wanna bring out in the discussion, let me know and then we'll come back here in let's say what time is it right now we'll come back here at uh 125 that'll give us seven minutes um and we'll be ready for a motion if somebody wants to make one okay cool thank you
Okay, we're back uh, for those, those of you on the line. Um, and at this point, I don't know if there's any uh, lingering discussion anybody wanted to have before somebody uh, makes a motion. Not that we can't discuss, we will discuss once a motion is on the table. But before that point, is there anything anybody else wanted to get out um, that hasn't been talked about? I had Julie. one question, yeah. Um, so as part of the discussion about five and the competing discussion about making sure we had balanced representation from more timber representing folks and more um, conservation represented folks. Um, it seems clear if we went for five, who the two timber people would be. It seems a little more muddy to me who the two conservation people would be. And I would be interested in hearing from the conservation folks here um, what their thoughts are. Sure, Casey or... Stacey. Do you want to speak to Ellen? Yeah, I would say um, it seems like um, Kelly Burnett and Ellen Morris Bishop, okay. um, you know, they're going to make a great team uh, with everybody else. Um, and Ellen, Ellen, you know, when when she and I talked, uh, she was like, well, here's the industry stuff I'm doing and you know, <laughs> I have done. And I was like, okay, well, I'm proposing you as a conservation person, but that's great because that means that you can work with anybody across the experience spectrum. So, but definitely from my perspective, those would be the two. Yeah, okay. Is that helpful or yeah. I think Kelly is fairly clear sort of mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. expertise and background that she brings. And then I know that, you know, beyond Kelly, like we were trying to find folks that did fall a little bit more in that independent space as well, where resellers didn't have such a clear conservation lens necessarily either. So. Maybe that kind of reflects that there, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that it's maybe less clear mm -hmm. besides Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Just one other thought, if I may, yeah. Chair Please. Barnes and Detweiler. Um, I think Kim brought up an interesting point about the science perspective. These are the folks with the, the peer-reviewed publication. Um, that's one perspective. I guess another one from kind of that angle is. Um, whenever there's this, I think, big bulk of uh, work that we kind of have an idea what it's going to look like, but it may change. I think um, there's there's a safe, the safe thing would be to have a more broad, diverse panel with different backgrounds, um, as opposed to just like, this is a really hardcore science team. So, uh, so it's just something to think about in terms of keeping the diverse backgrounds um, on the teams. Julie, do you have something to no. follow up to that? Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, anybody online? Okay. Um, well, I think we would be uh, uh, open for a motion if somebody wanted to make a motion. Slate. And uh, then we can discuss it. Casey, you here, I'm happy to make a motion. Okay. Uh, and we'll get the, the party started, as it were. Well, I would move that we um, nominate uh, Honiak, Burnett, Flitfroft, uh, Light, and Bishop to be our um, slated candidates to uh, send to the Board of Forestry. Do we have a second for that motion? I second. Twenty seconds. Uh, discussion. More discussion. Well, um, should we? And I'll take a. Uh, normally, we would do a vote right now, but should we do a consensus check with our finger to see if folks <laughs> are. Wrong. Do I all, let's go do that. Is everybody so so let's let's see by your by your show of, of the number of fingers. 
uh, folks' comfort with this, and then maybe that will help. If, if there's a need for more discussion, we can talk about it. And if, if not, generally, then we'll go ahead and move for a vote. Um, uh, so go ahead and let's see your let's see your fingers at this point. Okay. So uh, and online, Jason's got a four. So uh, will and remind me the two is probably not going to vote. Probably not going to vote for it. Um, I like to. Uh, Commissioner Tucker. He told me to call him Will, so I said Bell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Yes. Will's great. So, um, yeah. So, I, as I looked at this, I really felt comfortable with the, with the seven. And the, and, and the comments were made earlier about having one person from public. I think that with, with the, uh, with the INR, there, there is going to be a lot of public institution look at this and at, at researching it and as, as a structure things. That I was thinking that that the grab out and then I don't know I I jumping to Bishop over Dean I, Denny I don't know I I was comfortable with the first five going to to to, to randomly not the random but to pick up Bishop instead of Denny just made me was interesting to me and I would be more interested in, a, in the seven number to give them a diverse beginning to give them that that piece. Um, and so it's, since we don't have to have consensus, I don't think it's gonna be horrible that we have a person that that's, that's that either abstains or, or votes no. So so thank you for that, uh, Will. I, I personally, I tend to lean toward, if we're gonna, if we're going to um, accompany this uh, slate with the, with some written uh, verbiage that says we would also encourage you to do a call out. I would frankly rather have it be a little bit bigger to start with with a seven and not do a call out like that or not advise a call out like that. Give us a little bit more, uh, frankly, this group a little bit more say over what those seven would be than, than, to, than to call out. I'm comfortable with you know the idea and I think we've talked about it here before, and I'm just voice. I'm not saying I'm not controlling anything. I'm just saving my opinion, uh, and I it somewhat can agree with you, there, uh, Commissioner. Uh, at the same time, I think that those five uh, are a solid five, and I could support those five. Um, but uh, I, I'm not crazy about the idea of doing a immediately soliciting the board to do a, or somebody else to do a call out when I think that's somewhat our responsibility to, to staff this thing at the level that we think it's appropriate. And I think we think there are a couple other names on here and I would agree, uh, agree with, with, uh, uh, um, Will. <laughs> Will and, and, and with, uh, Josh that, uh, that Bob and Tom, you know, Danahy and DeLuca, would be a, a good addition to this. Uh, again, I'm not saying I, it has to be. I'm just saying that I would be more comfortable doing a seven than doing a five with a call out for additional. Casey. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Will. Um, to your point about uh, seven, I don't. I, I think that we're gonna have a hard time getting those other two because I'm gonna argue pretty strongly against um, including Danahy and I, I just want to prepare you for that, that we're going to go the other way with that conversation then. Fair enough. So, <laughs> then you and I watched them outside and it's uh, <laughs> Maybe it'd be worthwhile because we got the temperature on the, the one to take the temperature on the other option just to get a feel for where we are in the room. Temperature on this on the seven. On the seven. Yeah. Okay, sure. I, I, I think that there's some it's still about who those seven would be, but um, fair enough. So uh, let's do that. Temperature check on the seven, the seven being uh, basically the top seven there with swapping Buffo for DeLuca, I think is what, and what, what point, Josh's idea was. Point of order, I think, I'm sorry, I'm going to go with Will. Uh, I'll defer to him on this one, but I think there's a motion on the floor. Yes. And so if we're going to do a temperature check about something else, we should have that be a motion. The temperature checks aren't really part of. Of, of Roberts. Yeah. So, it's so, it's so, so, so the question is, okay. if we're just trying to, to work towards consensus, yeah. I think it'd be good 
to have those couple checks um, before we go to a vote. But at the same time, a vote doesn't mean the same exact motion isn't going to pass at the next round of votes. And so I'm not afraid of a vote either. Uh, I mean, so I would, we, we don't have a, a- Just for the sake of conversation, I think we're still in the in the uh, discussion mode and the temperature check is more of a part of the discussion than a vote, a formal vote itself. So I think it just helps us see how close we are to being, to having uh, a consensus around a vote on the motion. That said, Wendy, it looks like you had something you want. I am thinking about something. <laughs> Tim's comment about the scientists. So to me, like, I really feel like if we're expanding the number to seven, we should be including someone like, I think May and Eris Mendy were, um, you know, the people with really, really yeah. deep publication records and specifically the kind of science we're going to. So to me, it seems like if we're going to seven, one of those people should be in there. All right, Jason has a comment. Yeah. Oh, Jason, go ahead. All right, let me pop, pop off mute here for a second. So, you know, I, I talked about seven and I can support um, the five and the motion on the table as well. One thing that I wasn't able to do is when we did the initial straw poll is to see the hands around the table. Would it be possible to summarize for those of us on the phone kind of where everyone at? Well, let, yes, so let's let's do that. So I hear you, Wendy, and let's, let's maybe first uh, take, take the temperature around, but it, it seems like in the discussion we're, kind of saying that seven would be a difficult chip to land, but five might be a lot more easy, a lot easier. Um, that's sort of just my observation of the discussion so far, but let's go ahead and take a temperature on seven with, uh, with uh, DeLuca and Danahy, and then we'll take it as a, a, another look at seven with May and Arismendi, just to, again, discuss and see where people are. Um, and do in response to Josh's comment, maybe we should also let him know um, what our temperature readings were oh, for right. the first. Oh, uh, the five. Yeah. oh yeah. And I'm so, sorry. So Jason, yeah. uh, when we first went around the table, it was all fours and fives uh, in here, I believe, except for Commissioner Tucker. Tucker. Well, except yeah, for uh, uh, oh, John was a three. I, I, I was. Uh, John was a two and three and a half. <laughs> and Commissioner Tucker was a two, uh, and the rest were fours and fives. Um, and so that's that's where the that's where we were on the first five. So let's 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 take a temperature check on this seven again. The additional two being Deluca and Danahy. Where would people be with that? Go ahead and show your hands. Okay, so in the room, I'm seeing. Uh, is that a, that a two? So I'm seeing one, two, three, three twos, one, two, three, four, fours, and one, five. And then Jason's got a three. Okay. So that's, uh, that's sort of mediocre uh, temperature. Um, let's go to the other seven that, that Wendy suggested. And the, 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 the first five that we've discussed plus May and Arizmendi, where would people be for that? Let's see a sign of fingers. So I'm seeing a five, four, four, three, two, four, four, two. <laughs> Very uh, interesting. So, so again, mediocre response to that one. Um, what about a hybrid of the last two? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm just, like, like low maybe we did Danahy and, and um, May or Danahy and Arismendi. That's kind of a somewhat a hybrid of the last two, but those we took. Yeah. yeah. Can you say that again? It would be Danahy and. It would be Danahy and May. So, oh, right. Danahy and May. May. Yeah. Yeah. So research. So the five plus Danahy and, and May or Danahy and R.S. Mendy is what she's saying. I think Julie was like, everybody up to through Bishop and then R.S. Mendy. I was like, oh, that it actually makes sense. I see that. Chunk. And then Stacy, did you have your card up for a minute or maybe it would be Will. Okay, Will. So I was going to suggest that maybe we should just knock off, we knocked off three. Maybe we should just knock off five and then talk about the other two. 
if that would make some sense. Um, and I don't know if it does, but 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 it, but it, we, we we got through three pretty easily. Um, maybe we can get through five um, if we know we haven't. If we if if I knew we were shooting for seven, uh, I, so again, it, it, I don't know. Just an observation of a different way to try to, to close this. Yeah, it's like a good point. Wendy? I think I could clarify maybe what I said because maybe it was confusing. So I think we have three chosen at the beginning. And then um oh, now I'm like forgetting <laughs> I think I was going to like, yeah, get seven by doing the three we've chosen and then four more, which would be like Danny, like Bishop, and um either mayor and his medic. Eris Mendy. And I don't like the, I suppose May, because May got, I see three for May up there. Jason has his hand up. Go ahead, Jason. Just a comment, point of order. Um, you know, and I think as we think about this, we're continuing to try to get to seven, but the motion on the table is for five. Five. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to put the motion on the table um, or amend that motion to move forward. Yeah. Um, should we do a temperature check between five and seven? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe that would help. That might be. Yeah. Let's let's do a temperature check between enough. five and seven, right? And first. not the not the not the individuals, just just the the number. Uh, so can I see a show of hands with your appropriate fingers uh, for five for a slate of five? Seeing uh, all fives in the room except for um, Josh, who's got a three, and then Jason's got a four. Okay, so that's pretty strong. So let me oh four, a couple fours. Let me let me clarify that. What I meant was five over seven, or so. So let or we could do it the other way. How many people for seven? Let's see by show of hands. So that was pretty strong support on that one. How many? What's the support for seven? So I've got five, three, 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 four, two, five. And then Jason, what's your what's your thoughts with so four? So I th I think there's stronger support for five than there is for seven. Um and we've got a motion for five. Um, and I think we've seen just in the temperature checks we've done thus far for expanding up to seven, that is far more challenging. So based on that, I almost want to cut this conversation short and just say, let's vote on the motion in front of us and see if we can get to those five. Unless there's any other discussion or pushback on that idea. With that, I'm gonna call the question. Would you mind making sure that you, you make sure everyone that, to remind them with this Hamiak, Burnett, Flitcroft, Light, and Bishop. That's correct. That is make sure that we remind everybody that that is the five. I'm going to call the question then, and Let me, uh, can just for point of order, can I can we put exactly what the motion yes, is on yes, screen so yes. that everyone that sure. that way? Um, so I I drafted the, I drafted them would be fine too. What's that? But in the chat might be fine too for people. Well, but then they make minutes out of it. They do that. Um, so we just need to put yeah. need a bunch of names here. I draft this knowing that some of these people were going to be on there and it'd be easier to delete. So um, start firing off. Uh, so strike through. Or... Yeah, just I would just delete okay. uh, Buffo, Danahy. So personal. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a lot of it, Wasn't it in your suggested verbiage for the charter too that there be written when we have motions that they be written out so that's perfectly clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and really. So Deluca, yeah, Friedman. Mm -hmm. So just for clarification, this motion this would get us the five. Is this? Stop there. Is it just then, yeah, that's what I'm then, okay. okay. Based on the conversation we've had so far, I, I think we could continue to go. Yeah, the motion was for five. We had discussion about going to seven. I think it's stronger feeling around the table to stay at five. 
I think it's going to be much easier for this group to get the five. Yeah, I mean, somebody yeah. could always make a motion sure, for an yeah. additional two, and then we could vote on it yeah. if that's, oh, that's if right. somebody yeah. felt really strongly, yeah. right? I mean, we have that option. Second, that's kind of yeah. yeah, if it doesn't get second and then it ends there. Yeah, that's correct. If it does, then like move the forward oh, and vote. And, zoom in. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And then if we need also, a minority, there's that option too. Yeah. And I think that my um, my original motion is pretty darn close to that. <laughs> I think I use the word recommend and appoint nominees, but I'm happy to repeat it. Sure. Okay. To, to clarify, because it wouldn't need a second then, just to, um, to clarify my motion, my original motion, I moved the, the Adaptive Management Program Committee recommends that the Oregon Board of Forestry appoint the following nominees, the Independent Research and Science <laughs> Ellen Morris Bishop, Kelly Burnett, Rebecca Flitcroft, Jessica Homiak, and Jeff Light. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. The original motion, which was already seconded by Wendy. Um, so uh, let's go around. And uh, Commissioner Tucker. I uh, Yes. Uh, uh, Adam is uh, non-voting. Amanda. Aye. Julie. Aye. Stacy. Aye. Uh, Dave. Aye. Casey. Casey with aye. Josh. Um, I'll abstain. Wendy. Aye. Jason? Aye. And myself, Seth, I'm an aye. So motion passes with, what is the number there? Nine. Uh, with one abstention. Um, okay. Is there uh, any further discussion or uh, you folks could put forward another two, I guess. We could vote on those. I'm, com I'm comfortable with these five, but... And Chair, I, I have one just question, um, which is that um, uh, at least uh, in, I'm looking at <laughs> Tucker, at least in um, our county, uh, we, we required by just our procedures to explain when um, somebody was abstaining. And um, we don't have that in our charter, but I just want to uh, put that on the table to consider in the charter. Um, it's kind of a, that's a standard in, in some versions of Robert's rules because it helps us to understand why somebody does. Not, I'm not, not trying to single you. Yeah, I just wanted to no, I'm, I'm clarify happy, it. No, I'm happy to explain okay. if that's of interest. It just helps in the, the yeah. minutes. Right. Yeah. It, again, it does help a lot because it, it, I've seen us go back and then re-vote and take the exact same motion again mm -hmm. and re-vote and, and kill it after it got done being passed the first time. Because one person abstained or voted no, and, and their reason for going was, was right. so solid, but it didn't come out clearly during the discussion before the motion. So if you feel comfortable, I'd be interested in hearing um, yeah, so uh, it, it's sort of, uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I think we're missing out, frankly, by um, not including a couple more of the, the excellently qualified people we have, just late of seven, I think we're missing. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to put a spoke in the wheels, so an abstention is a way to indicate that. I don't feel strongly enough to vote now. I do think it should be a functional IRST. Um, I think we're missing out and um, by not going to, to self, but I can also see there's not a lot of support in the room for 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 seven. And uh, I think as Seth said, we'd have a hard time landing that. So I'm going to respect yeah. that. But at the same time, uh, I'm trying to find a way to, you know, express my conscience. So, yeah, thank you. Fair. So I'd make a motion that we, we add two more members to the uh, IRSD. Uh, Dennehy in May. I'll second that. Any discussion? The so, chair, may I speak? So, uh, I think that seven is is a better number for us to start off with. I I agree with Josh that they're that giving a little bit more research. Uh, I, in terms of an emphasis as we begin, would would be good. Um, I've never thought there's a huge difference between five and seven. Nine begins to get unwieldy or beginning to form and gets like we are a little bit unwieldy because we're so large. I think a seven is a pretty reasonable number. And I'd love to see us try to get there just to seven and whether we land. Um, and I think of landing on an aircraft carrier only did once, but just but <laughs> you know, that airplane's coming in and we're jerking, we're bouncing. Uh, this is this is that jerking and bouncing uh, that we need to get used to if we're gonna if we're going to have these discussions uh, and be difficult things as we go along. And so 
again, I don't mind dissension. I don't mind losing votes. So, uh, so thank you. Okay, motion is on the table. And up. just for some more discussion, um, I know that May got one vote over Arismendi, and I'm assuming that's why I shouldn't make an assumption, but I'm guessing that that's why May was chosen over Arismendi. But I did not memorize, and we do not have in front of us the CVs or the information that was provided for either of those. So, I mean, I it may not change how I go at the end of the day, but I am curious if additional information could be provided. I know Kim had provided some of the information. Maybe he wants to read those off again just from the research gate stuff, um, since that was already presented earlier today. And I just can't remember the numbers. Yeah, Kim, they're asking if they give the number of pubs from May and yeah, and I do I can pull up the C D I have the hard copies. Let me do a quick search. Uh May has 33 publications and Eris Mindy has 139. But I'm I need to go back online to see if I can find out um, what the subject matter was, if that matters. I can't remember who nominated both of them. Yeah, uh, I nominated Danahy in May okay. and Billy nominated okay. Yeah. Uh, and my recollection was that May is a hydrologist, right? She's a geomorphologist. A geomorphologist. Okay. Yeah, a ge right. geomorphologist yeah. And, and habitat. Yeah. That's her expertise. Nurse Mendy's work is mainly on interactions between um, uh, fish habitat and forestry practices. And is, am I correct in remembering that? Bay is on the East Coast, but but is willing to travel, mm -hmm. right? As needed. Okay. Yeah. Well, I second. Can yeah, is it appropriate to second? No, I think that's really so right. So I second. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Um, you third. You third. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, to 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 Will's um, function, I I think. Um, there's some really good expertise in the in the people that Will has proposed we add, and it's um, uh, you know, obviously I, these are both people I I put forward, um, but uh, I picked them because they're at two ends of the habitat spectrum. One of them has a lot of experience in the timber industry and with with management, uh, particularly around headwaters, and that that would be Dr. Danahy, and and then that hill slope to the hill slope to habitat connection that's really um, uh, vital for any work we're going to do looking at steep slopes um, in Eastern Oregon or evaluating the, the new steep slope rules for Western Oregon um, and how um, uh, the management and, and vegetation on those types of landforms translates in that, into the habitat that is crit critical for the covered species. Um, that's where Dr. May excels. So um, to, to speak to Will's motion, I very much support that. Um, I, I would also be fine with um, really any combination of adding Iris Mendy, May, or Danny to the IRST, but I, I do, like I said, describing extension, uh, I do think we would be missing out um, by, by not adding a couple of those three scientists onto the IRST. All right, any other discussion? Let's before you before you call. Let's make sure we get it on the screen. Yeah. I have to do it through participant. Yeah. So May May is the B and W Research to... Station. Uh, no, uh, James Madison University. Virginia. James Madison oh, University. Virginia. I... The past, no, right. past work has been in the Northwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, most of her work has right. been in, in, uh, in Oregon. So, with motion two, just for wording for this document, the motion number two add Christine May and Bob Danahy in addition to the five, the five already appointed. Yeah. Commended. Yeah. Can you type that? So, 
Motion to motion number two, yeah, yeah, motion. And we add Christine May and Bob Danahy and EHY to the list five. of yeah, five recommendations above. All right, we ready for to take a vote on that? Uh, let's go. Uh, Tucker. Aye. Master. Oh, wait, wait, before I do. Oh, I sorry, that's true. I hope you get your legacy. Okay. Yeah, Amanda. Uh, I'm going to be a no. Julie. Aye. Stacy. Aye. David. I think I'm going to have to vote no on this one. Casey. I vote aye. Josh. Aye. Wendy. Aye. Jason. Aye. And I vote no as well, but uh, we're ruled. So uh, motion passes. Do any of you want to speak to why you voted no and, and yeah. see if there's a request to bring it back to us? Well, I'm not opposed to adding two more, as I said. I just, uh, I've got some concern with the balance of with those two uh, in particular. Uh, and it's nothing I have against uh, individual. Oh, Christine May, I do know about Danny. And I feel like we're at a better balance uh, with the five that we have and not necessarily with adding those two. For me, it was uh, basically just boiling down to geography where uh, I found out that Christine May was, what, I mean, taking much farther away. And so I, I just think that even though she's had extensive probably experience here, I don't know how, how long she's been gone. Uh, you know, it's always good something like this to be able to be here. Maybe I'm too old fashioned, but it seems to me that there's there's something to be said for that. So I didn't have any problem with expanding from five to seven as my finger poll showed, but it was just this particular slate canvas was a little bit of concern to me, and that was it. Yeah, pretty much. I'm the same. I'm not going to rehash, but for really all the all the reasons already mentioned, and I do think that it's telling that the three industry uh, industry folks did did all um, align on on that vote. So would would there would there be more comfort with Dr. Paris Mendy rather than Dr. May for a seven? I get. Personally, for me, there there would be. I mean, just because that person's here mm -hmm. in the state. I mean, but again, I I, I focused on. I mean, you know, just be honest about. It, I focused on these five originally because most of them are part of my original slate of candidates, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I would have to go back in and spend some. I mean, these are serious questions, and so I want would want to spend more time evaluating. You know. If, as our expansion continues, but and I, for me, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that would necessarily change my vote. Are as many versus May? Um, yeah, I, I think it would help. But similarly, I mean, I think we're trying to strive for consensus, and we got that on five. And so, to me, it um, feels a little bit out of the intent of what we're trying to do with this. The body going mm -hmm. to seven, so. Probably gonna work out fine in the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I appreciate that. That it's like a one. One is a, a pretty solid, a nine zero zero or nine zero one. Right. Um, versus, I, I can't yeah, remember what it was, but it was. Um, yeah. Sorry, I Julie. spoke while I, you were. No, just... I'm just gonna suggest, I, not to presuppose the question, but um, for those voting no, um, 
if it might make you feel more comfortable with the decision. Um, and maybe this is another proposal that I should make, but you know, we might communicate to the IRST that there was strong support for these other two or three candidates and that they might be useful people to lean on or anybody on the on the list to lean on uh, in an advisory um, position. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Yvonne put in a grant application um, on one of the requests for a proposal. So it might actually be more effective to have him doing the work on the ground than evaluating other people's work. So um, I don't think the fact that we are not recommending them as official members of the IRST means that they couldn't make substantive contributions to the work of the IRST. So Amanda, uh, I, I am sensitive to, uh, to a desire to have uh, consensus or as close to consensus as we can get. And, and my proposal between the, the May and Azamande, I, I only chose May because of the vote that was here. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, it would make this, the vote be the same if we, if, if we didn't lose people, if we in fact went and added in Dana Hay and Azamande, it might, it might be worth taking a look at that if, if that would help you in your comfort level. Because I, I respect you and, and you've been engaged in this a lot more than longer than I have been. So I would, I wouldn't, if, if that's where you want to go, either you make the motion or I'll attempt to do it. Uh, but, but if that keeps us working as a group, that's important to me. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that. I, I think, like I said, I, I was very comfortable with five. I, I would have preferred us just to be at that five because as we were taking the temperature checks and et cetera, I mean, I think it's going to be difficult to get everybody to consensus on seven. I don't think we can get, we, you know, we didn't get the cons yeah, we didn't get the consensus before. I'm not sure we can get the consensus again, but if, but if we brought more of the group along, that would always be important to me. Um, I, yeah. if you're, so if you're still a no vote, with with that swap, if you because you don't want to go to seven, then it's not worth revoting that. Um, yeah, I I I I agree with where um, where Will's going on this, which is you know I was the um, the person with their heels in a bed on on just five, um, and I would I would personally if we can get to eight or nine on seven by swapping out May for Aris Mendy, then. I'm comfortable with that, but um, I don't want to be moving to seven on a seven to three vote. Um, I I would rather um, swallow my my bitter pill um, like an adult and move along. <laughs> then then you know have five that's widely supported, um, and then have uh, a seven that is only you know whatever that seven is that's only getting us seven or eight at best so um you know so uh, uh, david had indicated he could go to to eight with dr aris mendy but seth and it seems to, to if i'm understanding you correctly um I, i'm settled with danny he and aris mendy as the sixth and seventh we're at eight zero um or eight, eight two eight <laughs> sorry eight two versus basically nine zero on five um I, I would rather do five than, than land there. Um, so. Well, yeah. It's a good try. Process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where are we at? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so we have a third. We have a third motion, and I would make the. Unless you want to judge, I'll make, I'll make, wait, before you make the motion, are, uh, are we talking about making another motion for seven? Or are we talking about bringing it back to five? Going back to we would five. be basically making a motion to cancel the second. Motion. Okay. Um, would rescind be the right term? There? Rescind or, yeah. But, but it'd be a new motion, which is, yeah, yeah, to, which is, yeah. yeah. to oh, drop, yeah. to drop May and Denny. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would move we essentially uh, rescind the second motion to, two more members to bring the IRST up to seven. Okay, we have a new motion. We have a second. Yep, second. 
Commissioner Tucker. Yes. Any discussion on that? Yeah. All right, let's call the question. We'll go in the opposite direction this time. Wendy? Uh, no. Josh? Uh, aye. Casey? Aye. David? Aye. Stacy? Aye. Sure. Aye. Amanda? Aye. And Stain? And then uh, Jason? Yes, for that. That's an I, I think, right? Sure. And then I'm an I with that as well. So that motion also passes with one no. Well, um, same. One abstention. Yeah. Who's who's the no? Just when? Yeah. yeah. And I, I guess staying with format, Wendy, you want to explain your no vote and then and then all your abstention. Um, yeah, I was just moved by the comments of including more of the scientific expertise that we've gathered here. And I think that we're able to pass something by seven and we did. And, and therefore, I would just have stuck with the process we've gone to at, you know, at the second motion and action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner? I still think seven was the right number. I, I still think that we should be bringing forth a, a, a larger uh, more robust pool to start off with. They'll take some time to get structured, but we want to get them going. So I was, I think seven was the right number. Uh, and I think that maybe I made a mistake in the first motion. And uh, and maybe that's where I should have gone in the first place was with Sarah Monday versus, versus May. But um, but anyway, I, I think seven's the right number. Okay. So we've kind of gone through one motion, gone back to the original motion. Uh, all of all of these passed with a different mix of of no's and abstentions. Um, I would say, for the sake of discussion, I am comfortable with these five. And given the fact that we haven't really landed in a place of very good consensus on a seven, uh, I I like the balance of the five, and I like the thought that if there is a need for a couple of more people <laughs> that those five would be the ones that would be the one to decide who those additional folks and expertise would be. I like that idea rather than us continuing to go around and um, try to get more variations. Um, so uh, I guess as the chair, I would say uh, from my perspective, and you guys can overrule me here, I would like to move on and leave the five that we've gotten with respect. And I know, Wendy, you were a no vote. Will, you were an abstention. So um, please speak out if you feel like that's absolutely terrible of me to move on at this point. Um, and you want to have more discussion and continue to talk here, uh, bring that up. But that's what I would, that's what I would suggest that we do. Yeah, that's for me. Uh, I can live with that point. I mean, like I said, I felt we put good discussion into coming up with a seven, and that that struck me as a good landing place. But we back back from that, and that's the decision. And I thought you were going to go for filibuster. But, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to move forward. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for everyone. I know that was not easy. That was a good uh, exercise of our first um, <laughs> a, a, a substantial decision. Um, so uh, it was a good cordial discussion. I appreciate everybody's perspectives, and I have confidence that these five uh, people are well suited for this. So, now, what we one thing we didn't discuss, and I don't know how much discussion we need on this, Terry, but we did not discuss who fills what role. It's pretty pretty clear, clear here that Rebecca Flitcroft is filling the the, uh, the agency public representation, but as far as the the conservation and timber, um, it's less clear. So uh, I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. Well, so, um, you know, Senate Bill 301 is silent on who decides who fills those roles. So, um, you know, or that they have to be named, right? or they're specific. It just says they have to be these representatives have to be there. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's a choice for you to say, we want person A to fill this role. And it could be a choice to also recommend the board going forward when person A leaves the committee, 
the person who replaces them has to, fit has to fill that same role. Or you could just leave it up to the board to make the decision since there's sort of two, two each for conservation and uh, timber, you could say, you could be silent on specifically who's the official rep, because it just says there needs to be at least one, doesn't right. say there only one, at least one, and when either one of them leaves, how they get replaced is up to the board. So just that's something for you folks to consider mm -hmm. how you want to voice, how you want to speak to. Does the conservation community have any strong feeling on that one way or the other? I mean, I think it's, from my understanding of sort of the development of this, it, it seems most aligned to have it identified as particular seats for folks. And then if that person leaves, then it's a clear process to make sure that that seat is covered. And I haven't looked at the language in a while, during, but make it, like they have to be on the IRST. So it seems, even though there's not language about the process of identifying them, it does seem like maybe a gap that if we clearly identify that we kind of address any uncertainty around that. Yeah. Okay. Jason, Jason, you have your hand up. Great. Yeah, I appreciate that comment. I was just thinking, it, is it worth having the timber reps and conservation reps provide some feedback and see from our perspective, you know, what makes the most sense moving forward so we can weigh that as a team? It's not a bad idea, yeah. um, given that there's two. Like, you could take yeah. that back to your caucus and you could take it back to ours and we could have that discussion then form the group um are you reference would be i'm not sure i followed that are you saying do you go back to your meeting talk to this and, and discuss who is the official rep or which one is designated from yeah yeah i think that's what jason was suggesting yeah that's correct is go figure out who's going to be representative from that caucus so we can then bring it back to the group and say okay this is the actual represent representative that we'd like to put forward because I'll be, I'll be honest. From the timber perspective, it's a little bit. Um, I'm conflicted whether that should be Jessica Homiak or Jeff Light. Um, um, Jeff has been our scientist in the in the negotiations so far, and he wants to say, yeah, it's Jeff all the way. But Jessica Homiak is, you know, clearly uh, in the midst of her career and and very and 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 represents a uh, a large landowner in the state of Oregon. So clearly. Um, uh, timber representative and so they both in some instances fit and so I'm not sure what the whole what the larger group would want me to say as far as what the who should be designated. So just to just to um, speak to what Jason's recommending, the only con concern is that this is going to the board in about five weeks okay. and which means it's <laughs> It's all the decision needs to be made super duper soon, like today, for whatever <laughs> you're going to recommend to the board, just because of how the process, the board materials process works. Fair enough. And you want one name? Well, I that makes the most sense to me. Um, you know, statute says include at all times at least one voting member who represents each of the three slots. Amanda, um, I think. It might have been Wendy and then Casey. And oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see everybody else's Wendy. Go for it. Yeah, um, my thought was, especially now that you just reread the language of the statute, that it's this group that um, elects the members of the IRST and that the requirement is that when we do that, we need to have a representative from each of those three groups. And we did uh, have a consensus on that. So I think I would probably say going forward, just stick with those three people. And I also think that it's better to make a recommendation to the board than not. And rather than be silent on it, I think we should weigh in. And okay. since we have voted, we had showed consensus on our straw poll, I'd say just go with that. Right. And it's, I'm going to go um, out on a limb and say, I mean, I think that at least Stacy and I can agree that Kelly would be <laughs> like when we would call the conservation. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, Amanda, and then Will? Yeah, I guess one thing, looking at it from a slightly different perspective, um, I think for at least myself, I can only speak for myself, but there's probably others in the room as well. Balance was a big, it was very important to me. And that five 
you know, we sort of identified two conservation, two timber, and then one public. And so I don't know if that would be helpful to identify all of those to the board so that they could see the balance that we were trying to strike. Now, moving forward, would that imply that if one of those left, that they would, you know, of, of the two that were decided, um, that, that, you know, that would be the balance of five for its entirety. Now, how does that work if two more get joined on? And mm -hmm. is the intent that we continue to remain some sort of balance? Or if you add, you know, if the IRST themselves adds, you know, another conservation person that along with that, they bring another industry person. Now, I don't, I don't know where we go from there. Um, but I do think there is something to say in sort of identifying those you know, how we identified it to show the board that we tried to strike a balance. Commissioner? So I would agree with the showing the board that we tried to strike a balance by showing the how we thought all five of them fit those different categories. But having said that, once we get past that, I I think that they would should have the right to to look at the law, to look at the look at the the the, the guidance that that law gives us and it says were to have representative of these three of these three, and so they add two more people, and they add two two environmental or one environmental and one more from a, from an agency. Um, I'm not sure that 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 that, that is crushing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they're looking at the at the law and and following the letter and and the intent because that's also important. Um, and and I thought our intent because we are trying to be consensus driven to try to match those things. I think that was good and we should share that piece, but I'm not sure that we should go further by saying, if you lose one, you got to add one and, 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 and forever be uh, tying them to that. Yeah. Um, I, I would uh, echo what Will said. And then, you know, the statute doesn't seem to say you, we have to designate roles. It doesn't actually spell out roles. It just says we have to have at least one of those. So I think telling the board that, you know, our only spot in this is the initial composition. Mm -hmm. So we went for a balance mm -hmm. and I, I think we've achieved that. Um, but going forward, it's up to the IRST um, as long as they have at least one of each. So I don't think we need an official designation. And I, uh, and I don't really think that's our place as the AMC because this is going to be an independent body. Um, and uh, I, I would certainly support, um, you know, labeling all five in terms of this person represents timber, this person represents timber, this person represents public institution, and these two persons represent conservation. Um, and calling that out for the board so they can see how we went to get to a balance. But, you know, if, if, if uh, Dr. Homiak is the official, Timber representative, then what happens if you know she pursues another opportunity? Does that mean that you know that Jeff Light becomes the official timber representative, or you know what what is that? I think that kind of creates a, an issue that doesn't exist in the in the statute. Um, and uh, our job is the kind of initial composition, and then beyond that, as long as there's at least one of each of those three roles, it's up to the IRST to decide how to fill vacancies or expand their numbers. I actually think that's pretty yeah. solid uh, thoughts. Wendy. I just wanted to say, well, I agree. And I just want to say also, we're trying to use balanced people. Mm -hmm. That's so I, I think that to a certain extent saying this is this point that we really, we have our goals for these people are to have balanced people who work well with others. And I think we have found, well, looks like we have found people like that. So. I think I would argue against designating each as being in a specific camp, but rather handing over, as you're suggesting, the five. As it's being compliant with the statute and including representatives of all three, but not trying to pin it down too much. Like a good place to land. Anybody have any, uh, Stacey? I guess I don't strongly disagree, but just wanting to continue to sort of echo, I feel like I have the same concern as Josh about lack of clarity, but from the other side, just imagining how the board is going to make decisions on this moving forward. And like if Kelly comes off, IRST, you know, how how is someone replaced or how is the intention, you know, in statute, there's three people, right, that have to be in a seat. And so how do you ensure that those, that balance is met without kind of indicating 
who's filling that role. Um, I hear what you're saying and I, and I won't um, hold us up too long, but I guess I just wanted to echo that I do have a little concern about the process of ensuring and the IRST is going to be responsible for developing their process to bring on new folks. So maybe that's a challenge that they have to address. And I think we've met our responsibility in deciding those folks in our discussions, but I guess just flagging that as a concern. Yeah. Fair. Um, so uh, I, I, it's, could we do sort of a, a, a combination of that where we don't necessarily call out the designations, but we, in our uh, write-up that we send to them, we encourage the board to continually seek the balance that we have tried to stri strike here uh, of people, interests, uh, backgrounds, uh, and encourage the board to seek out that type of a of a of a structure moving forward as as IRST changes, knowing that we don't have we only have one shot at this. So we we could give some sort of a write up to that, Stacy. I'd be happy to work with you um, to to put something like that together that we can both um, you know sort of from our perspective vantage points agree. Uh, just a short sort of snippet that would go with the, the nominations to the board, encouraging them to continue a, a good, healthy balance moving forward. Would that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think citing the statute would be useful and, and maybe we can craft the language, but just strongly recommending that, that there's clarity in this process and that the board will need to meet the requirements of the statute, kind of leaving it up them by making it very clear like the intention and the law requires those three perspectives to be represented yeah okay all right so with that i think we're not going to necessarily label each person in the slate but all the reasons stated works um well thank you that was a robust discussion and um uh, yeah. We made it through. So, this is what I say. I have a process suggestion. So, this intuitively means good, but it's one finger. <laughs> this, you've been giving these really right. emphatically, which yeah. is awesome, but it looks like stop. Yeah. That's applause in American Sign yeah. Language. <laughs> so, you know, it's I like more. it. Uh -huh. it's it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, do we need to take a break? I'm just going to do a process check here. We already had one short break before. Uh, if we need to take a break, we can, or we can flow straight into um, finalizing the MPC charter. It's 2 30. We have us slated to uh, 2 45. We have another potential break at 3. So, I guess I would suggest we just go straight forward and start into the charter. Be going. Unless our uh, our secretary needs some time to prep. Nope. Okay, so let's let's move straight into the into the charter, and I have to get back my notes. So this too is an as a decision item, although hopefully not as uh, and, as many motions. Um, it was a really good exercise, though, Chair. I thought we didn't appreciate it. Everybody's thought in the end are solidly consensus. Okay, so um, go ahead, Terry. How do you want to kick us into this? So really, there's there's multiple ways this could be done. Um, there's there's several points where there were some differing perspectives. That's probably a good place to focus. You know, we could try and move through this line by line and edit as a committee. That that can be a little bit deep, but that might be important to folks. Or we could zoom to the places where there was particularly some, there was just different opinions expressed that that, that seems like a, at least to start there as a place to, to focus your conversation. So I would recommend that. We scroll down to under number home number three. Um, so there's a just to clarify, there was at the last meeting, it seemed like there was consensus on what was a substantial decision. And I, the challenge that I had drafting the document was that there were two different 
things agreed to that conflicted with each other. One was let's have this, this let be perfect document. Sub substantial decision. And on the list was what is a substantial decision? And then the other, uh, there was also a, if it's not a substantial decision, then it, then then we just all agree and, and there's no vote. So there's a there's some difference in what people want in terms of if it's not a substantial decision, does it take a formal vote or does it just everyone go, yeah, that, that's good enough? And so that's one point of some differing opinions. Yeah, I mean, it, it pins around motion making and whether motion making made something a substantial decision or if there was specifically a motion to make something a substantial decision that was on, was stated both ways in the discussion. I, from my memory takeaway was that we decided that um, because we might want to make motions about things that were more minor, that we would have the process of saying, I make a motion, this is a substantial decision. And then if people agree, then it is a substantial decision. And then the next vote is the actual vote and you need seven. That's just my memory from the last one. And while I don't necessarily uh, uh, remember it perfectly uh, like that, I, I think that's a really good idea because then we know during our discussion um, of that motion that we're going to need seven. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad way to do it, frankly. I don't remember it that way mm -hmm. either. Of course, I wasn't at the last meeting, so it's probably like... <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the recording. It's like uh, yeah, over and over again. It's kind of like the uh, the sentiment of you'll know it when you see it because we'll, we'll get to vote on it and say whether that's a substantial decision or not. So I mean, that maybe makes some sense. Look at that. So so I think what I'm hearing is there's this list of. These X things are definitely substantial decisions. Anything else could be a substantial decision, but you'll make a conscious vote. Is that a substantial decision to decide if it's a substantial decision? Yes. I would say no. No. <laughs> Well, it's it's a minutia point, but it yeah. it does matter. It does. it does. Yeah. So we just had the discussion about about how we tag names. And, and some people could have said that was, that's in the law, there's a reference there, that's a substantial decision. But we chose as a body, work through it and and go for a nod of the head without a full vote. And that made it not a substantial decision. But so yeah. I, I I like the idea that if, if we have something before us that someone feels uncomfortable and says, ooh, I think this is something I think is substantial disagreement between us. We should resolve this by making sure we all know how we vote. I asked for a roll call vote. It's a substantial decision. Um, and I don't think we have to have a vote about being substantial or someone declares that it's substantial and wants a roll call. But somehow I like the idea and liked it last time about having some way to know that this is because of the disagreement or the inability to reach consensus. This is a decision that we want to call a vote for, therefore, wouldn't that be a substantial decision that helps any? Again, this is purely process. Are you saying that two separate motions? Well, that's what I heard. Or an inclusion in the motion that it is a substantial decision. Or a conclusion or, in the motion. Or the third, third option is the fact that when you take a vote, that's a substantial decision. Yeah. Um, and, the, and that's where I thought we sort of left it was that if we all four votes and requested a vote that was substantial and that's okay. how i thought we left okay. it mm -hmm. but yeah. but i'm any one of those three i think we should make sure we agree on which one of the three it is but yeah yeah that's kind of where i thought we left it which is almost the same thing because if somebody if somebody says look i want a formal vote on this um but then if uh, then that kicks it into the formal or the the substantial decision yeah, with the adoption of the, of the temperature taking is sort of an, I think the confusion was how do you get, how do you read the room without voting? Um, and that was the confusion of like, if you were calling a vote, you automatically made it substantial. But the ability to read the room without a vote, I think, kind of clarifies it. And then you're right, the act of voting. Is, it's almost like a flag, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Everybody gets a flag. And if you yeah. throw your flag yeah. and say that's a call for a, just, uh, uh, yeah. everybody can call for a, decision yeah. 
for, for, a, for a vote. And if it's a call for a vote, then it's a substantial decision. So I have the whistle, I have the flag, and I have the shirt. So next time we'll come, we'll all. Any, any more, any discussion on this? It sounds like we've kind of yeah. gone both ways. Yeah, but no, I, I, I really like that, that construction. That if we can, yeah. you know, if it's not something that's statutorily required to be a substantial decision, we just chat around and tell everyone's like, yeah, it's great. That, that's fine. That's not substantial. But um, yeah, once once someone says we need a vote on this, I think that's kind of de facto makes it substantial because we're bothering to take a, a vote and lock oh. down our positions. So. Wendy, does that sound, I mean, I know- That sounds fine. This is more point of my puzzlement and, and trying to clarify it in my own mind. And I did think we came up with a two-step process last time, but it seemed kind of unwieldy, so I'm happy to do it in a different way. <laughs> so was this a substantial decision that we need to actually vote on? Uh, uh, yeah, the charter. The charter probably is. And so if, if it says in the charter that a substantial decision will be decided by the by the group, uh, based upon uh, a consensus that not the sense that the room needs to have a vote, roll call vote. I mean, does that feel comfortable to everybody? It, it does to me uh, that we can work, always try to work for consensus. And if we fail that, then we'll call for roll call vote and that automatically makes it. Uh, and chair, the language, um, I think there's language, I think the language is about right. Just, you know, it's in here. It's underlined and bold, and if I'm done, there makes a motion for a decision. Blah blah blah. I think that gets that gets the to the the substance of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might not be exactly what Commissioner Tucker said. No, no, no. It's it's, it's great. Okay, I'm happy. Okay, what page is this on? This is on page three, right in the middle of it. Oh, I. Oh, I for decision. Four votes, yeah. Yeah, so we would change the change vote, change decision to vote, is that? Yeah. If a member makes a vote. Oh, yeah, vote, right, right, that's okay. a good point. I think if it says the vote, that's Much clear. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Okay. Um, I just have a quick comment. Yeah. So, so basically, I mean, I, I, I like the comment up above that says the above list is not exclusive, right? So I would say... Uh, so yeah, a committee member makes a motion for a vote and the motion. So yeah, I don't, so yeah, so I'm trying to figure out if we just say the above list is not exclusive yeah. and then everything else not is scratched out yeah, and then we out. add right. if a member makes a motion. I still think this is a little bit confusing because this to me gets to what Wendy was saying, a two-step process, because you're asking for, you're saying if a committee member makes a motion, so a formal motion for a vote, and and includes that and that includes in that that this is a uh, is, that this. I'm we're trying to strike that. that. We're striking that. Thing. Yeah. yeah, we're going to strike that. That's the proposal. So we would say the above list is not exclusive. If a member makes a motion mm -hmm. for a vote and it's second that the decision will is by default a substantial decision. Yeah. I think that's what you were proposing. Yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. getting rid of that. Yeah. Street, that so does that make sense? I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. So, if you, uh, I agree with the sense. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So here it says the above list is not exclusive. So you get there. Yeah. yeah. Or just then, or not a period. Just a, the comma is fine. Or, yeah. Yeah. Because then the if delete uh, everything down the bowl. Yeah, if you just delete. It's not a capital. Such yeah. to blow, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And change decision to vote. Yeah. yeah. But just the yeah. first decision. Just the first thing. Yes. Thank you. You're doing great. I can get behind that way. Because now that's not a two step process. So yeah. I think it's yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so that was. I was trying to yeah. clarify that. Yeah, Wendy, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, another thing related to that substantial decision is the question of how many members, how many people need to be in the room to make a substantial decision. Or, well, I mean, in the in, in the meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, since people online can vote, uh, can vote virtually, um, and you know, quorum to hold a meeting 
isn't necessarily the same as what's needed for a vote. And so that's just a technicality. And, and actually, Josh was the one who, you know, I raised the question and Josh said, I don't think it's necessary to have more than seven members present for a vote for a substantial decision. Now, I take a step back and remember that everyone in here can send a proxy to vote in their place. Um, so it's not very likely that you'll have less than nine. You might get one person who at the last minute is sick and can't make it. And so that might happen from time to time. But so it's a, you know, I raise a question. Do you want to require for the for the sense of consensus that there be enough people showing up? And Josh countered, well, you could have a couple of people not showing up as a way to prevent a vote from occurring. So let's just require seven. But I just want to clarify that that's a you folks should agree on what what your mm -hmm. oh. determine what your agreement is regarding that question. And where is this right? Where um, is this? It's at the top of page two. Um, the quorum for holding an ANSI meeting shall be six voting members. Yes, right there. Yeah. yeah. For the purpose of voting on substantial decision, quorum shall be seven voting ANSI members. So we can have a meeting, but we can't do any work. Well, you can still do work. You just can't make a substantial decision. Yeah. But usually, like a, the way I, my understanding is that a quorum, it's the number of people who have to be there for the meeting to actually be able to, to take place and take action. And that if for a non-substantial decision, it would be you, like a majority. So you could have like four out of six at a meeting taking action, but it couldn't be substantial decision. Does that accord with what other people are thinking about this? Yeah. By statute, yeah. you couldn't make a substantial decision. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But as Wendy noted, you can you could make a you could make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, there was a non-substantial decision by vote um, mm -hmm. because you had your quorum present. Yeah, and, and then you have to have seven people for a substantial yeah. decision, obviously, because you have seven decision. affirmative votes without seven people being at the meeting. So, <laughs> Terry, and I, we we have, circles. I mean, it, it also seems like not that I would foresee this ever being a problem, but it could be potentially. And that, by, by virtue of us saying that it could be a substantial decision if we decide it's a substantial decision, I like that idea. But at the same time, that's not necessarily. You, if we go that way, then then you might not know when a given meeting and agenda comes out what the substantial decisions are on that agenda. Exactly. We're choosing whether to send a proxy. You know, if you have an emergency or something, and how important is it that we get. That, you know, that my vote is there at that given meeting. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wonder, uh, should there be something that says potential substantial decisions will be noticed in every agenda? Mm -hmm. So, so there is something in here that's, um, there is language that, that's part way there that agendas will, will um, I don't remember exactly where it is, somewhere there is a, uh, Seems like a best practice. Yeah, yeah. And, and no one look around the table and say, oh, you know, those three people are missing. Let's mm -hmm. vote on this one, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. Let's run through. Yeah. I think it's. There's definitely language that you put in here because I remember commenting on it. Yeah, it's very important. You need to have something, some link between the agenda and saying that it's substantial. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be voted on. Yeah, it isn't. It isn't. But it's a it's a um, proposed language. And even if even if it's oh, not it's just on page one, even if we sort of highlight that this could this is potentially a substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. it could go either way, depending yeah. on the group, but at least notice that it could be potentially substantial. Yeah. Um, you found it? Yeah. No, the ODF staff person shall serve as secretary to the AMC and send an agenda for each upcoming member to AMC members at least seven days prior to each meeting. The agenda will include all items scheduled to be voted on at the upcoming meeting. Yeah. Uh, in addition, any two AMC members may add an agenda item 
provided that such requests be made 15 days before the upcoming meeting. So it should, yeah, if there's going to be a decision or potential decision point, yeah, it should be business items and potential items. That should cover yeah. So whether or not it becomes a substantial decision, if it's going to be voted on, uh, it's noticed. But but that doesn't mean it can still come up yeah. during, a, during a meeting. Yeah. So. Well, and, and hopefully there would be enough conscience in the room to say, well, these three people are kind of aren't here. I move that this is a a, a vote. I mean, that's still that's still relying on some integrity integrity of the rest of, of the committee. And so I'm not arguing against having something in there that um, reinforces uh, or it's expectations really. Yeah, what it does then. Yeah, yeah. So. Julie, you had your card up. I know, I keep going, but Amanda's been up longer than I have. Oh, Amanda's up. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm patient. It's the pink thing, I think. Makes it hard. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, which way does it visit better? To get a water bottle. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I guess I appreciate all the discussion that we've had thus far. Um, I, so I have, I work for a pretty small organization and very few people that I work with are engaged in policy work to the same level that I am. None of them are. And so for me to get a proxy and to know who I should send for my organization to be that proxy um, would really hinge on whether or not we're going to have a substantial decision. And so I personally would like to see that number of, you know, whatever the quorum is for holding the meeting, meeting and making any sort of a decision be the same as the number I required to um, vote on a substantial decision. That would really help, you know, the small organization that I work for and help me dictate who and, and advocate to my um, to my boss who should come in my place. Julie? Yeah, so to echo, I was gonna say something similar for maybe different reasons, but um, one, it gives you more flexibility if something should come up that you're, you know, you're not hobbled by having to wait till the next meeting anyway. Um, and given what Terry said that, you know, it's unlikely that we would have fewer than nine in a meeting, it doesn't seem that restrictive to say that our quorum is seven. Not, it's not a big deal to me, but I don't see any problem with going to seven for the quorum. All right, any other thoughts? Anybody feel strongly either way uh, that it should be less or more? A couple of good arguments for seven. I just have one more comment, and maybe it's not needed, but mm -hmm. uh, the other reason that I would say seven is fine, or I would appreciate having seven for the quorum in general, is because it really puts the onus on all of us to make sure that we are committed to having somebody here if we can't be here, that we are committed to this process, right? I think that it would it would well for that reason as well. Okay. And given the fact that we can have proxies, I think it's not reasonable. But I am sympathetic to what you're saying. Uh, it's not easy to find a proxy with a especially for smaller organizations with very specialized uh, folks. So so just I think what you're saying then is one for holding the MC meeting shall be seven, seven. voting members of the MC. Yep. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Yeah. Yep. And then, okay. all, and then also language in the on the first page about providing others that will be discussed. Yeah. Potential vote. Yeah. Right. For potential vote. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's because we're distinguishing business from voting business because mm -hmm. we've done so in our. our yep. Okay. All right. Um, so when you get down on page two, you're talking about uh, in discussing the business of the MC uh, but forum. Mm -hmm. I'd like to explicitly indicate, make it explicitly state. I want to very clearly state that when I'm, if I were to speak about what's happening at the MC, that I clearly state that I am not speaking for the body, that I am speaking as an individual member representing this group. And, and this is what I have to say. But I, but I want to make it not just indicate. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a county commissioner. But, you know whatever. I don't I don't want to see 
I wanted to be very clearly stated that I'm not speaking for this body. Um, and it, so, and I don't plan to, by the way, but I just want to make sure that it's very clearly said that, not just indicate, indicates it's not for me. Gotcha. And to clarify, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a it's a great um, language. I, I think that the way it's written right now would not clarify that. Because what you're saying is that um, explicitly indicate that you were speaking um, solely as a member and not as a as a speaking for the committee. But right, but it, that's what you said. But but it must clearly explicitly state they are not speaking. Um, that I'm speaking is my individual person, not as not as the body. But yeah. Once we have yeah. a vote here, once we have a vote here, that is the vote. Yeah. And, and we should all have to live with that vote. Totally. And, and but but it, it, but it, but you can't take the hat off. I mean, the people look at you exactly. You can't take your hat off. Right. So you, you have to say you have to yeah. say it's to say I'm changing my hats. <laughs> but you can't. You can say that all you want. Yeah. But you, I just want yeah. to make sure they have to explicitly state that they are uh, not speaking. As a member, Stacy. Yeah, I agree with that, um, and I included some language I thought, but I'm not okay. seeing it in this draft. But the IMST charter has language that's basically like members are free to publicly discuss the subjects that may come before the AMC. They must explicitly indicate they're not speaking as an AMC member. There's some language I think we can draw from, but I agree that that's an important. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. To, to go on to that. Um, uh, as Commissioner Tucker said, we we don't we can't take that hat off. And so when we're speaking on an AMC subject, presumably people are listening because we're an AMC member. And so I want to be just conscious of how we write into this that um, uh, me speaking, I will always be an AMC member. And so the, to, the, I think that clarification should be, that's my proposal at least, is that it should be, a, I'm not speaking for the body and this isn't a decision of the body. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it just needs a little word something. Yeah, I think, it, little, yeah. Right. But it's a significant difference to me. <laughs> not, not speaking as a representative of AMC? Or on, on behalf of the AMC. That's probably the best. On behalf of And then I, because, just because of freedom of speech kind of issues, um, I, I bristle at um, must, must as a language, and I'd be comfortable <laughs> with should. And I thank you, because that, it's got to be the type of when you should do something. <laughs> something i just know that we've been talking about shit somewhere else uh where is that but okay an alternative to must if they want to they might want to say we're sorry it's all right they are to explicitly state or you could put amc members are I uh, do have our, me our members of the uh, 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 are free to act as themselves, but they should. I don't know. <laughs> Stay fine. Just like um, you know, adding some language about you know that it's your opinion of the in individual team member mm -hmm. and doesn't reflect the consensus of the AMC. Just something like Definitely. speaking on behalf yeah. of yourself. <laughs> You guys getting that? Sure. sure. <laughs> I can send you again. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is some of this. Three paragraphs should cover the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you don't Thanks, mind, so we, I wanted to go back to the <laughs> Must, should, shall, may. Are we done with this discussion uh, on uh, discussing media members and that sort of thing. It's uncomfortable. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, within your, your respective organizations, you know, whether it's Wild Salmon Center or AOL, uh, you're going to have thoughts on this and you're going to, you know, talk about rulemakings and as we go forward. It's just a matter of being respectful and how you can have your opinions. It's just you know, not representing that this is and, and when we were having this battle, this is how this went down. And and Josh was over here and Will was doing this. And, you know, um, that that not be. And I think as long as that's captured in that that respectful with, uh, with the acknowledgement that people are going to 
you know, have to talk about um, uh, the work that happens, just not talk about the deliberations themselves and individuals mm -hmm. and that yeah. sort of thing. At the end of the day, this is a publicly recorded meeting. That's right. Mm -hmm. They can go back and look at exactly yeah. exactly who said what, how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can can we get updated updated language so we can look at see what what we're talking about here? Because yeah. I'm yeah. not altogether yeah. clear on what the proposed That's language right. is that yeah. part right here. Yeah, maybe yeah. I just want to hop in. And see yeah, that. Amanda. Yeah. Yeah, um, kind of to, to what you just said, Seth, um, I would like to see and hear some language around, um, I don't know exactly what the right language is, but like not calling out specific names of individuals. I mean, I think if there's some language we could bring in that talks about um, kind of how the process occurred without calling out names or specific organizations and referring the media back to the recording to, you know, draw on well, on that. Maybe maybe the thing to do would be to just say, this is my perspective. If you want more information, mm -hmm. go watch the recording. Yeah, but I mean, my perspective could be that Casey was mean or something, you know? <laughs> 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 So what if Casey and Amanda, you guys get a radio show and you guys go <laughs> through the session and talk about what happened? But, but because on the I have a hard time it's not with where you're going second though, because we used to have an attorney who'd bring us in these legal descriptions and list what judge said it. The reality is that judge was the minor opinion, the opposing uh, opinion. Right. And so he'd bring me in the statement of what the judge said in this case. Here's the case. Mm -hmm. This judge, it was decided this way, and here's what this judge said. And if, and then you go look it up, and he's Judge giving you the sending, yeah, the sending the opinion, and 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 I I don't want to go back and force people back to that. I think we're talking about not necessarily that level of flavor. Yeah. I think I would almost rather have them not not have any of us comment on the arguments or discussions or disagreements or how many votes it took to get finally get something through. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have it if you had to say something and you're speaking at a group. Um, you, you talk about things and remind them that I am not speaking on behalf of the group. These are my perspectives of what occurred there. Uh, here's where the decisions are going in the future. I think we're going to go this way. I'll be pushing hard for this or whatever it might be, but you got to be careful. I, I would not, it would destroy our individual uh, respect for each other if we started going off and, and summarizing what I remembered Seth said, right. as he called That's me, right. put, right. put me in my chair yeah. in the corner. Stacy. So I had some language. I can't see me on the Wi-Fi or I would send it to you, Terry. Oh, yeah, I, I totally borrowed this from I am Yeah, there's a new password that we can password in Tim for it. Oh, oh boy. Oh, Stacy. It's totally borrowed from I am but it basically says to preserve AMC integrity, AMC members will not publicly discuss outside of formal or informal AMC meetings, ongoing AMC deliberations, or pending discussions that concern specific conclusions and or recommendations. So I think kind of some language getting to that. You want to, I mean, I can type it almost as fast as you can say it a little slower. Preserve AMC integrity. AMC members will not publicly discuss. Um, a little bit. Not publicly discuss. Keep going. Outside of formal or informal AMC meetings. Yeah, they're not allowed to look. Okay. Oh. We're informal. I'm not watching David. It's just... <laughs> gotcha. ongoing AMSI deliberations or pending discussions that concern specific decisions and or recommendations. While AMC members, oh sorry, new, new sentence. <laughs> Period. Period. While AMC members are free to publicly discuss the subjects that may come before the AMC, I guess here's the question about must or not, but they must explicitly indicate they are not speaking as an AMC member. I'm okay with must there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would be so sorry that we have. If you're not I'm explicitly saying that you're speaking on behalf, yeah, you really should be. 
And yeah. Yeah. People should be able to. The only people that should be able to do that are you two. But, but with everyone else's uh, input and agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So is this different than the first two sentences up there at the top? With, I think she's replacing it. Yeah, I think it's a Yeah, and since she would be a replacement for. Oh, okay, I just, I'm not seeing a lot of difference, but. It's very subtly different. different. Yes. Okay. Well, I do like the, I do like the piece about referring questions to ODF staff. I don't know if there's a. Sure. To include that in that. Or like. Yeah, I got They it. can, yeah. instead of they will, yeah. you know, that we should consider referring the media to the staff. And maybe even, sorry, I didn't put my thing up, but um, I know, uh, so, so I'm going through the charter, I'm on the um, Certified Burn Manager Program Committee, and we're going through the charter right now. And as it relates to the media, I wanna say um, there was a, there's a sentence in there about, or I think it might even say who, we should um, contact at ODF, like who the staff person is. And it says that in the charter. Um, so it's just clearly right there. And obviously that may change. Maybe it's just we put in a position or um, because like, you know, say for instance, I got called by the media and maybe I'm not comfortable saying, but I want to refer them back to ODF. Do I send them to you, Terry? Do I send them to, like, who do I send them to? Yeah, really it should go to public affairs. Yeah, exactly. So, so I don't know. If it's so when I read this, to preserve AMC integrity, members will not publicly discuss outside of formal and informal meetings, ongoing AMC deliberations or pending discussions. Those uh, formal or informal meetings, are those formal or informal meetings of the AMC or those just formal or informal meetings of any type? Oh, because um, I'm thinking about yep. from perspective from, from my organization, right? I represent 50 forest landowners, large landowners and, and manufacturers. And we have policy committees at, within our organization. That's how we do the business. And and uh, when I when I call that policy committee together and inform them of discussions, things that are going on, we might talk about all sorts of things, right? But certainly, the business of this group is very important to that community, and they're going to want to know when there's a pending decision coming, uh, and they're going to want my perspective as the policy lead. And I think Stacy, you're in a very similar uh, situation, and I know Amanda and Casey and, and Dave, you guys all are. And so uh, it's going to be very commonplace for me, frankly, to be in those meetings and be bringing people up to speed on what the discussions of this group, not necessarily Wendy thinks this and Josh thinks this, but more, you know, this is what's happening. And we've got this research out with IRST. And here's what the potential is for, you know, as we go down the road. And here's the dates that we're going to be looking at those things. So I just want to make sure that this isn't precluding that sort of conversation from happening. Josh. Yeah, I think publicly is probably a really key word there. Okay. Um, so there's a difference between me talking to, you know, our legislative in terms of NDEQ, yeah. me talking to basin coordinators and management and our legislative liaison about this stuff. Uh, there's a difference between that, um, which is analogous to you talking to your members, right. your member companies versus kind of going out to talk to right. say me or yeah. the general public yeah. or like a public presentation yeah. of some sort yeah. or, or whatever. Does it dilute it just by removing the outside of formal or informal meetings? Does the intent still, right? It's, it's ongoing. Once it, I mean, you know, it doesn't bind us after yeah. deliberations are finished yeah. and decisions are made. Well, it's all about it's clear on what we mean there. So let's go to Casey and then, well, Casey. I think Will is, oh, okay, I'll go with the chance. Yeah. Um, so in the event that, um, uh, I'm going to just use I because it's better than like saying Julie. Mm -hmm. um, in the event that I want a reporter to understand the dynamics and what's happening and pending decisions and, um, and a better understanding. Uh, this, as it's written now, would preclude me from saying, hey, check out the recording and next month there will be a decision on this. But yet that seems like a very appropriate um, connection for me to make with somebody in the media who maybe reports on forestry issues for a living. And, and so 
if there's either maybe I'm out of line and thinking that that's a totally normal thing, or I'm wondering whether there's a way to. I'm not sure that you're talking about does conflict with this. This yeah. is publicly discussed is different than refer. Go right. find information yeah. there. Yeah, those are the public. I mean, you're not public. You want to pitch a story, basically. You want to pitch somebody who's on a sure. natural resource beat. Yeah, you think, hey, we've got a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mike, you might, you might want to clue in because we got an important decision. Right. That's well, what you're saying. Well, yeah. exactly. It's card up and then Stacy. So my concern is, is that I have now got five minutes on the natural resource committee of AOC. And it's the elect and it's a public body and it's recorded and occasionally the press does listen in. And I have five minutes on the Council Forest Trust Lands agenda. And so right. and so I'm expecting that I am going to, and those are public meetings, um, and members of the Board of Forestry, in fact, sometimes show at least always the, the chair, uh, one of those. Um, I give an update about what's happening. And now can I only say what happened and I can't say what's happening. Um, and I, begin I I see where you're going with that. And I think that would be inappropriate for us to put a uh, a muzzle on you from being able to inform well, them. In fact, they asked me to come back and if I took this role to come back and report what's going on. And so they're looking to guide me um, and, and replace me if I'm out of line. I, but, but, but I just, I think it, this one puts a crimp on me a little bit. Yeah, Stacy. Yeah, no, I totally hear that. And I think that wasn't the intention of this language. So I think let's work through it because mm -hmm. I think we're all in the same situation where we need mm -hmm. to be able to be responsive and provide it because of the people that then recognize that there's that line of not saying, well, you know, Stacy said this or Amanda said that, and mm -hmm. here's where we're leaning and the vote was maybe this. Um, so how do we kind of capture that a little more clearly? I'm back to Casey and Amanda having a radio show. <laughs> how, about, how about members will uh, not speak for, I mean, here's a, here's a couple of, I'm just going to put them in like bullet format. Not uh, Members will not speak for the AMC. Members will avoid um, categorizing other individual members or groups um, um, Positions. positions or whatever right or or their 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 supposed positions um uh i'm just trying to think of like best practice what are we trying yeah, to accomplish really we're trying to yeah. we're trying to accomplish like a, a a roadmap for respectful dialogue yeah. outside of here without yes. muzzling yeah. each other yeah. uh inappropriately yeah. um and yeah. so you know don't speak for the amc avoid categorizing other people's yes. positions or or um um, you know, where do you think they're going to land on something? Um, and then uh, what else should be on? Oh, I was just saying one way of getting some of this is by saying that a lot of what we do is already public. So saying that you may restate things that are already public. There you go. Because that... Because it says it will not exceed statements of established fact Regarding AMPC votes, I mean, you will not exceed uh, publicly available material from the meetings of AMPC. I mean, there's a separate, I agree with your additional issues. I just thought that that yeah, might be one yeah. category be previously released public information that's available on the recording. Obviously, we should be able to discuss that freely. Right. Yeah. Um, Julie. Well, I... I agree with what Wendy said, but then I also kind of heard in that what Will's earlier concern about the, you know, someone who would misrepresent by presenting only part of what was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so if you could say something that is factually true about what the committee said, but that would Not lead exactly. somebody to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I don't know how you put that in language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amanda. Yeah, I think again, because Will's in a little bit of a different position than some of us because he's a public figure. He's yeah. a public figure, right? And so everything that he does is mm -hmm. out in the open, whereas a lot of us have executive committees and we you know to close door sessions. Mm -hmm. So maybe to get to, to cover that um, in that first line, instead of members will not publicly discuss ongoing AMPC deliberations, maybe it says will not discuss directly with the media ongoing AMPC deliberations. I'm trying to get at what the intent is, right? 
because it's basically that we're you know not not wanting somebody to go directly to the media, right? I mean, that's really what this section is about. Um, you know, is really in, I mean, yes, there's going to be a open dialogue. Everything one has to do is in in the public under public meeting law. So I'm just trying to figure out what is a graceful way to actually get out what we're trying to avoid. I guess I don't know. Go ahead, Casey. And this is like tangentially related, um, but I just want to throw in a little caution um, because you had mentioned, hello, oh, we're having like, you know, close our meetings. And right now we don't yet know, we, ha we haven't had clarity about whether your conversations about AMC are something that are subject to public records laws. And so I just want to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. lack caution. that for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful about generating until we get clarity. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what have we agreed on here? I don't know. I think everybody, I think everybody uh, generally kind of agrees with respect, with some sort of respect that you have these here. Um, but um, I'm not sure if the verbiage is correct. Yeah, I, this still needs some work, I believe. Yeah, but it's it's a good, comfortable out of a good discussion. Are there yeah, other things that we take, jump into before taking a break? And I know that there was a process. Yeah, I haven't had a question. Yeah. Oh, so oh, well, I, I wanted I to do, go back to. So yeah, I didn't want to yeah. interrupt the flow, but um, if we're ready, things, to, yeah. Is it um, one? I think maybe some broader statement that gets around some of the details is like speaking in a way that would um, harm the long-term effectiveness of the MC or effectiveness of the MC. So it's it's broader, um, and then the proxy thing. Um, so I'm wondering if this might be an unpopular idea, but if the proxy has to be within the agency that the person is in, the voting member is in, um, is there currently a rule on that yet? Or um, the rule just says, let me pull it up here, but it essentially says they have to. Interim rule is, uh, an organization on MC may designate someone to serve as interim member in place of their current member for up to 90 days. So it doesn't say anything about that person being funded from a particular place or not. It's just this organization says we're going to have somebody step in while this person is gone for a month or whatever. We're going to have that person step in. What are you thinking, uh, Adam? Yeah, as far as in terms of there, if if someone needs a proxy, I don't think they're required in rule or statute that it's from their same organization. No. When you mention uh, your organization, that um, it could be anyone that you pick as a proxy. That's the way I'm reading the yeah. statute and yeah, and uh, really what's the role? Yeah, as long as they're representing that interest that because it's very specific in the statute. I mean, it, to use Amanda's, it says associated organ loggers, right? So as long as the associated organ loggers are good with that individual who's now gotten their proxy, I think that's yeah. probably sufficient. Amanda. Yeah, another follow-up question along similar lines is, could we have somebody else on the committee be our proxy? Like mm -hmm. say, I needed set like could I have second be my proxy and he has two votes one for AOL and one for OFIC or is that not allowed because that could that was, definitely help me out. <laughs> I mean, never envision, but think about it's a cool language to see. Right, does somebody and, get two? And maybe I don't want that. Maybe AOL doesn't yeah. want that. I don't know. I'd have to go back and and check with you know my board and stuff, but. I, it's just a question that, you know, yeah. there's a lot of other organizations that I'm on where you can uh -huh. give your proxy to somebody else who's on the same, in the same group. That's so nice I just don't know. As far as I, would have my, my, plain, my yeah. very second plain language reading of this doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Although I, I would say probably not in the best interest of the organization because you forego another human Thing, you know, that you be part of the discussion. Yeah. 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 Um, that would be but in a pinch. 
right. an interesting yeah. one to run past the attorney. That's yeah. appropriate. But anyway, just, yeah, really just a question. I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, good. That's okay. If we're sort of moving on to other topics. So a little bit of a go back, just because I know we are on the agenda, it says that we are going to be making a decision, right, on the charter. So process wise, we've all kind of expressed that we talked a lot and there's maybe some additional cleanup of language that needs to occur in here. So do we do we have to make a decision today, Terry? Or no. Okay. I mean it'd be nice to Get it really close and perhaps say one or two folks and you do a little work for just to make language yeah nice and tidy and then hopefully at your next meeting it's not much left to discuss and then yeah. you get a decision there. I mean that we have very so as long as um it was recommended it gets called a subcommittee okay. and as long as it's not a quorum then should be good. Yeah, and you're not making a final decision. You're just it's preparing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's less than it's less than a quorum, and and it's it's sort of a work product that comes back to the full committee. Providing a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just that, yeah, like a good call. Like under voting, it talks. You know, it goes back to this whole language of making a vote and is it substantial or not? Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's, there's several places. Yeah. Absolutely. So just need cleanup. I just yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Well, it seems like. Again, to process check, it seems like maybe that would be a good thing for us to consider and be putting together a small work group after this meeting to kind of bring this document to closer to closure. Yeah. And then vote on it at the next meeting. But in a lot of head shakes and agreement with that. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you look at the time frame, I mean, it seems like you're tackling two large topics per meeting and it's deferred. <laughs> Something as substantial as this down the road, you're going to short trip the list of topics and the first research questions, which you know, that's why we're here. Right? Details, details. As long as we get, as long as we all get it, sorry, oh, no, no. as long as, yeah. we, as long as we all get it and get it gets emailed to us, like whatever that final form is with enough time for us to be able to review have a short discussion and then be able to vote at the next meeting. I don't feel like it would delay too much. Agreed. It yeah. may not I think it's fun. important to have language pretty close to solid for the yeah. yeah. Just like theoretically, if this said something like this, yeah. 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 Uh, Casey. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to, um, I hadn't caught it and that's part of this is catching things you haven't caught before is under the conflicts of interest and um, I think that there is, um, what I see is that some of this was pulled from statute, but a lot of it is, um, uh, there's problems with it. For example, it's uh, a chair coach at her call for identification and discussion of conflicts of interest after the AMC adopts an agenda or a task. And in general, these happen before you make a vote on something so that the room knows that you are have a potential gain or loss by the decision, um, or that you have an actual one and you should be abstaining and uh, not voting and stepping back from discussion. So I want to clarify that right now this doesn't follow state law or best practices. Yeah, so I think Christian shall call for identification discussion of conflicts of interest at the beginning of a yeah. 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 And it's not the agenda that's the that the conflict is with. It's going to be the, it's the items, the task. Yeah. 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 When the AMC ends a discussion, it might be an opportunity. Um, it might be a good opportunity to, to just refer to the statute um, because then the the next paragraph or over the top of page four um, is some of this is kind of in statute and some of it kind of isn't in statute based upon my understanding of statute. I spent a lot of time in these points. Um, and so I think it might just be better to, if we're going to say that uh, 
we're going to acknowledge that potential and actual conflicts of interest um, can exist in this committee. We should refer people either to statute or have statute in here. Okay. Just a suggestion. Thank you. And I'm actually not totally sure. It would be good to clarify because we are, I believe that we're considered public officials. You definitely are public officials. Okay, so then yes, it would. Then potential and actual conflicts would. And, and um, so I'm also making you know that talk to you next month to address that question because cool. there could be some nuance that because there's public officials and then there's things because you're representing particular you're named in statute as representing particular organizations so does that modify put a modifier or caveat on I just don't know I that's Legalese beyond my pay grade. Right. And um, I will say that at least at Yamla County, uh, we have a legal decision from, I think, um, Oregon Government Ethics um, regarding advisory groups, right? So that um, we, uh, with the exception of our garbage um, advisory committee, so Solid Waste Advisory Committee, every member of every committee that's purely advisory, so their decision goes to the decision making body being the board commissioners, they actually can't. They're not required to, they can't be held subject to um, potential and actual conflict of interest laws and disclosure because they're not the ones making the ultimate decision. That would seem like it makes more sense and fits here. It would. I just don't, you know, yeah. We should get that from, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think. Amanda and then Adam. Yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm on a bunch of different committees and advisory groups. You know, a lot of us in the room are for ODF and other organizations. So I don't feel like many of the other charters that I am on have specific language about conflict of interest because of that. But so that'd be good to look into. One other thing, if we do need to have it in here and it does make sense, um, I guess the other thing, and maybe it doesn't, I'm not a lawyer side, so, so don't hold me to it, but, um, you know, Casey brought up the potential and actual conflicts of interest, but I know that there's also perceived conflicts of interest as well. So I don't know if that's another one that would need to be identified. Okay. It's kind of just that second sentence in that one. Yeah. In that paragraph, but. I've usually seen it in a separate policy. Yeah. Like set a separate conflict of interest policy. And one thing that I'm thinking as we go through this, and I'm a little surprised the department doesn't have like a standard conflict of interest policy or a standard public disclosures by committee's policy. So as all these committees are developed to be great at some time to have it like a, you know, a, a examples we could use in developing this. So yeah. yeah, I looked at a couple of like the CFF charter and the, new mitigation fund charter and that was kind of illuminating but it's sort of too bad there's a, like it's some general provisions covering this point right did they have anything about conflict of interest in those not in those no i mean i was looking at just for other when i was looking at this thinking, oh yeah. how do these other charters deal with it mm -hmm. it would be helpful to have this kind of a centralized standard you know odf yeah. committee charter yeah. yeah and one other thing terry i don't know if you've looked into this if uh public records requests i don't think that would apply to everyone here but as a public official if that would would that so there's some gray area and we're going to have people that know about that here next month to talk about it okay great because it's, it's it's confusing to me and i've heard different opinions and perspectives and we'll have somebody that that should be able to address that here yeah, next Stacy. Yeah, um, I think probably some of us came from me again, pulling from the IMSP charter, which does have conflict of interest okay. and mm -hmm. probably missed some things. So it'd be great to get more clarity on what we're responsible for or not. But I did notice that there was just a gap in this document that I think we should talk about and think through. Yeah. All right. Any, any other areas we should discuss today before we sort of figure out who our group is in? Wendy. I just have one global thought, which is that their charter doesn't say like when we meet, how we determine meetings are and special meetings. Maybe we don't need that. 
but because I think there's sort of a presumption is we have to do work, we have to meet, but I have seen charters that have specific things for how you call a meeting, how many members can call a meeting, how a special meeting goes. But we could just put that on maybe for the work group thinking about whether we need that. It might be that that's already in the statute and that's why we don't need it. Yeah, I'm not aware of Pueblo Latino one specifying any of that. That's a question. Okay, we can ask with that. Do we have any volunteers to work on this slide? Or anybody tie into Josh? Thank you. Yes. I'd work on it. I'm Maybe. Um, I'm volunteering, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> You want me on there? I, I, I'm the uh, punctual. I'm the well known within my agency and on the CFR. Yeah. is being nitpicky about mm -hmm. punctuation and so. structure. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the semicolon guy. The semicolon. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We we just we're looking at content. We don't need a copy editor. I'm like, I, 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 yeah. Ask me. Are you an Oxford comma person or a not Oxford comma? Uh, I will totally die on that. You should have an Oxford comma. <laughs> Agree. We'll meet you on the bridge, Jack. <laughs> Are you volunteering to join the group? I usually would, but I, I'm oh, yeah. pretty at the pass. I just say, I do want to share just like before we get off of this particular page. So I think I might, you might want to say a subcommittee or a, subcommittees and work groups to be set up in order to avoid an inadvertent forum. Just because we, uh, I think we've actually may want to create standing subcommittees, gotcha. but like to me, work groups are like, hey, we have this task, mm -hmm. we need oh, to get it done yeah. by next like an meeting. ad hoc thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Include the subcommittee, just say yeah. subcommittees and work gotcha. groups. Yeah, I will join this, the the two of you. So it's Wendy, uh, Josh, and myself. Casey, okay. did you want to join as well? You know, I'm totally good with not being. Okay. If we're like it strives to have a, a balance, I think that and maybe can drop off. I think it can only have three, right? Otherwise, it's a forum. Isn't that true? Yes. But if you can do it, I'm very happy. I, so, so that's it. Yeah. Okay. Wendy and myself. And thank you. Okay. We'll find a time between now and today to circle up on some of this. Yeah. And if, and if, uh, if, uh, ODF could help us with some of the drafting like you're already doing. That's just that. Yeah. yeah so uh, oh, you're you're making some changes now. So we'll have and like yeah. something to go off. We'll have a revised yeah. version. Clean this up. But like the all the stuff was yeah. kind of messy here. So yeah. we're gonna clean that up and make this a more comp the best effort. The best <laughs> effort to the you've got something to work from rather than, oh, this is still a mess okay. from before. Yeah, that's great. Amanda. Uh, Jason had his hand up before. Oh, I saw oh, that. Jason, thanks. Thanks. You saw that. I looked earlier and didn't. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, just process check. So basically, ODF will clean up from what we talked about today. It'll go to the subgroup. The subgroup will then finalize, send it out to the rest of the membership for review prior to the next meeting. Is that second kind of the process that we're going to look through? Yeah. Yep. That's what I understand. Will the subgroup go through? Yeah, the subgroup will go through. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So just to clarify, that was helpful, Jason. Thank you. So, as far as if we, as the rest of the group, if we have specific comments or added language or wordsmithing, do you want us to hold off on that until we get a more finalized product from the work group? Or do you want that up front to work in? I would say if it's been discussed today, um, then I think we've probably adequately got uh, that place, mar that marker place. And if you have additional things that you want to share with uh, one of the three of us or all three of us, feel free. Or send it to Terry. Send it to me. Or send yeah. it to Terry. Yeah. Yeah. I just like I just want to know if you want it up front or if you want us to hold off, review what you guys come up with, and then send stuff. Just I would say if you have stuff that's outside of these things. Uh, it would be send it to Terry sooner, sooner, rather, sooner than rather than later, okay. and then we'll get that in the mix. We'll try to anyway, and then there'll be another bite of this apple, yeah, yeah. obviously, before yeah. we yeah. take a vote. And so, if you don't see that on the second, once the second draft comes out, or third or fourth, whatever this is, 
then um, feel free to bring that up yeah. um, at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. and just timeline. I mean, obviously, ASAP. Uh, yeah, let's say today's, let's say by next Monday at 8 a.m., and then I can turn around fast and get okay. the three of them. We will, we will be meeting as the four of us, four plus, uh, until sometime early as we be midweek. Later than that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's good, I think, because all of us are busy and knowing when you guys need that is is helpful. Yeah, it's a pretty quick timeline. We've got to we've got to make go over what you got yeah. together. Yeah. Come up with and then that's gotta go back out to this room for at least a you know a reasonable amount of time, week, two weeks, whatever it is, yeah, yeah. for the next meeting. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have a whole lot of time. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So really the three of us need to be in meeting like next week. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll set that up. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, Will. So we're sort of leaving charter, but one of the things I'd love to see us do is talk about the executive summary and how we maybe should get that at the beginning of the meetings, and that should be like our agenda that we annual that we each month review and correct if we need to, uh, but accept that that is summary. Well, that's a good question. You know, the um, executive summary is going to be very light, and and it's meant to. It's 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 different than meetings minutes. So typically, yes, we formally approve the meeting minutes. This is going to be very light, and and the official minutes are what's recorded and posted online. So just to, I also I think it's important that whatever we put out is not erroneous. It, it's is correct. So. So I would just like us to see, consider if we could, that the minutes are in fact a recorded document. We yep. have that piece. Yep. I, I totally get that. Uh, but as you write a summary, uh, you're trying to catch the, the flavor of the discussion. You're trying to catch the motion and you're trying to summarize the actual vote. And, if, and But sometimes as you hear things, as you write things, you might miss it compared to what the group might say. I'd just like to see us uh, look at each time just for an agenda item that, that adopts or accepts that that executive summary if you wouldn't mind it if, and i don't know if there's support for that there's oh the five across the way i got a, a five so that's something you put in charter i don't think she needs to be in the charter um we can oh, have minutes sorry we have minutes yeah. and i do think if you're gonna do the executive summary i'd like to see us accept it i think that's reasonable uh to me i appreciate odf being willing to do that because i think it's going to be useful going looking back at you know frankly it's hard to listen to an entire meeting's worth of to, to to get at so it'll be useful i think just for that sort of brief broad brush this is when this was discussed in that basic idea, idea. Yeah. and then if you want to know more about the in-depth then you go back and get into the actual reporting into this mm -hmm. Be useful. I appreciate it. So is is that something that would just kind of go into our normal procedure? Or is that something that should be included in the charter? Uh, I don't think we need it in the charter. Yeah. yeah. Just to weigh in. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a feeling one way or the other. That's yeah. why I ask. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, we've kind of made it to the end of the discussions here. Uh, is there anything else that we need to? When you're done with the charter, I do have like just a few slides at the end. I want to get on. Oh, okay. So I, I just want to before we get that. Uh, Wendy had a uh, a question about special meetings or calling meetings or how if if we don't hear from Terry and we don't hear from the chairs. Um, and we're like, well, what's going on long term? Do we have something in the charter about either how we call a meeting or maybe we don't? Well, I did like it's, it's mentioned that really briefly, and and I I don't I thought maybe a step on that could just be like look at the statute and see if it covers those points. Yeah, and I didn't see and if it were okay about, with people yeah. just to think about in the next draft of the charter if we need to add like a paragraph just like saying something simple. I think like we would just follow the meeting procedures consistent with the statute, and this many people can call a meeting, and a special meeting can be just kind of noticed or something like that. 
So I read the statute a couple of times, Wendy, and I don't really see anything in there that covers it, but I do think that if that's something that's of interest, um, it might be something that, that with, unless we worry about people abusing that process, um, that it would be something that we should think about having at least a discussion about, uh, about adding to the charter, because that would be a charter question. Because that is mm -hmm. not usurping, but it's but it's but it's going after the power yeah. of the of the co-chairs, yeah. and so that's that's why groups have it in right. case the chairman of the board uh, says no, I'm not going to do this. No, I want to accept that, and and that allows for two members or some number of members to call for a special meeting. And so I don't know if that's I don't have a strong opinion. I, I think I'm hearing consensus of wanting to work together, but I think you're very right about about that might be a discussion we should have. Others? It's hard for me to envision this being a problem, um, but it's so, I mean, we're gonna have a lot of business to do, but I guess it's for as long as this potential, you know, this committee exists, there's there, there will be down times where, and I could even see one five and four, four to six months from now where, well, or if we've got our first batch of questions, here you go, IRT, and IRT teams are going to take time to mm -hmm. work through those and get back to you. So there will be, yeah, it will become more periodic. Okay. And I would hate to have it be a situation where you, where, where we, and so in my mind, I'm thinking, should this be quarterly? We have to meet quarterly. And that, to me, right. I don't want to have a meeting just to have a meeting. Right, yeah. yes. right. Um, yeah. That's so maybe that doesn't make sense either. Right. Amanda. Yeah, and and I agree with that, um, but I do think that it's it's pretty common, right? That that type of language is in a charter. Um, it doesn't preclude you from having more meetings, yeah. right? But having a minimum something that we include, or maybe it's tied to like a certain amount of time following, you know, giving the IRST some information or giving them the research question. We have a, some follow-up meeting after a certain amount of time. I, there might be a different way that we can try to incorporate it into the specific work of this body, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to including some language in the charter about it, because I think it is pretty common. So maybe as the work group, we can put our heads together yeah. and think about what that and I'm interested mm -hmm. in what ODF staff thought could be there and, and wrestle with that. Yeah. 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 So um, just to wrap up, I mean, it sounds like we're done with the charter conversation for today. Like Jason was. Um, so first of all, uh, photos. So for the IRST nominees, our board likes to see photos and a little bit of information about people they're appointing. And this is a consent agenda item, but it'll still be nice to provide photos. We've got photos for some, I don't even remember exactly who, um, but actually it's here. So let's see, Burnett, we don't. Uh, Jessica Homer, we don't. Jeff Light, we don't. So for the people that, that nominated those people, it'd be great to have your help trying to get a photo within the next couple of days. Okay, we'll talk see what I can do. Then I'll get both of them and see if they have a headshot. Yes, that's great. And I'll write to Cheryl. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I will be contacting people. But I'll write your person. Great. And Mike. Um, Becky? Yeah, yeah I was just making a note to myself to ask her. Um, and then, uh, so this is just sort of a, a draft idea to remind folks where we're going. And okay, so the charter decision didn't happen today, but we'll get there the next meeting. And then what's coming up, if you want to go ahead and move to the next slide. The next meeting, talk about the initial list of topics. Might get to the first research questions, but we'll obviously have to finish up the charter. And also the discussion about public meetings and public records of somebody in the room that's more knowledgeable. Do you folks still want to continue to meet in person um, and have the meeting from with lunch and noon to four? Is that right, Dan? That's right. <laughs> okay, cool. We have five. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, unless there's anything else, Chair. I would say one more thing with regards to meetings, if I could, and that is, 
it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe go back to the last slide. Yeah, could. We so, have we have for monthly it's through the summer it might because of people's vacations and things like that might become more. I'm just wondering if there is at any point, I mean, we've been going monthly since January. Right. I think monthly makes sense, has made sense and does make sense still for yeah. May and, and mm -hmm. June. But uh, beyond that, is there, uh, does the schedule allow, and it's a question for Gary, right. us to skip a month here or right. I, I personally would find that useful. Yes. Uh, so in, <laughs> in, the big picture is yes. The challenge is that in rule, it's August 1st to have your charter and your list of topics done. The list of topics can be pretty broad stroke. And I think the conversation next month will help put some bounds on that and, and you'll be able to get to something pretty good, whether or not you're ready to make a decision in June is a separate question. But it's 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 a good first. That's what I'm looking for. It's a good tool to say this is this is the bounds of our conversation and where we're going to focus in terms of topics. But that's not that's different than first research question. So first research questions is something that could be. Uh, it's, uh, we'll take some more time to to specify, and that doesn't have a, a deadline like this topics and charter. So. So July, skipping July might be a little more challenging. Skipping August should be doable, but it, it kind of depends also on what you folks want to do. Uh, but you do have the August 1st deadline that's currently. Okay, I guess I'm just planting that seed yeah. for everybody on the committee. Yeah. It feels like we've been in a little bit of a sprint here, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. And I, I appreciate all the work ODF has done in this sprint. To get us where we are, but at some point, I'm not saying I want to like delay decisions, but at some point, I think going towards more of an every other month where we could might be useful for everybody's calendars and, and getting work done in between a period of time. As we're going about to see, it's pretty rough turning something around in time for a meeting that's just yeah days away. Yeah. So anyway, just putting that out. Yeah, we should. Okay. Well, just one, I guess my concern would be that it seems, but I understand this whole committee. Our focus is to deliver on the tail end of these of this timeline. So, it seems like we want to make sure we want to spend adequate time really digging into the list of topics. That, you know, and if that's I mean, that's it. I mean, that's basically why we're here, right? And and so it's taken us what four meetings now just to get the policy. Yeah, so there is an August type. structure frame set. So now we're really, I mean, it's, to me, the, the interesting stuff mm -hmm. is following. And so I hate to short shrift that. That said, the, the, the uh, uh, and I don't disagree with you, but the, um, the report itself does outline, does, did do some of that work for us. The, the, yeah. the, um, right. Rule has so many yeah, first three. Yeah. 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 Well, they just identified things that they thought of. Right. Well, and, 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 well, there was a lot of thought. Yeah. 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 A lot of discussion. Yeah. There was a lot of discussion that went into those yeah. first three. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm, so, I agree, but what I'm saying is that those are the things that they thought. Yeah. Would, yeah. Oh, there's for sure more, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying that if we got to that point in August and 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 you know there was a a shorter list that was delivered to the board to get us started. It's not going to. That doesn't have to be the list that that absolutely won't be the list that exists forever. Yeah. Like at a future meetings, we'll add on to that list. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I'm, uh, all I'm saying is, we don't necessarily have to come up from scratch. And in fact, we we do have a solid three of that are three of three top that is there. So, yeah. 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 In statute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With that, uh, let's adjourn. Oh, thank you. Good, good job, thank Beth. You. Good job. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'm uh -huh. teaching. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, you know, the, the big. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.